Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. You're uh, welcome to Twit Special number 82, coverage of Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, the WWDC, uh, keynote featuring Steve Jobs and friends. Steve Jobs and his fellow executives will be on stage talking about iOS 5, OS 10 Lion, and something called iCloud. Our coverage is brought to you by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With the new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at slingbox.com. And we thank them for their support of breaking news coverage. Talking with Alex Lindsay here about what we're going to expect to see here in about 10 minutes. Uh, trying to get Andy Anatko on the line. Uh, he'll join us uh, before the announcement. Then he's going to he's gonna actually pay attention. <laughs> and take it's a notes. crazy idea. <laughs> it's know. a crazy idea to pay attention. Now, now, and by the way, one of the things we're looking for, we're fishing out there. If anyone uh, might want to uh, contact us uh, related to an, any possible audio feeds, um, those are always... Or video feeds; those are always appreciated. Hey, Andy. Yes, I'm. I'm setting up the command center right now. Uh, the scary thing is that now in front of me, I've got one, two, three, four, five screens. All right. Uh, <laughs> now we see you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, given that, uh, yeah. Given given that I've got uh, three screens just for, for covering live blogs, the screen that's running the Skype, and also I've got my the real computer, because believe it or not, I have a deadline of one half hour. Uh, after the keynote ends, I will have one half hour to complete a piece for the Sun Times for tomorrow's print edition. <laughs> <laughs> good times, though. Good times, good times. Andy, thanks hey, uh, yeah. for joining us, though, for for the uh, the preview uh, for the for the the pregame of the WWDC. Exactly. Alex was just sharing with us what he thinks. Uh, we're going to see, and, and and we mentioned the fact that we know we're going to hear something about iCloud as well as OS X Lion and iOS 5. Uh, what are you expecting? Uh, pretty much, uh, it's, it's not so much that uh, anything that we're going to see is going to be a big surprise. We're, we, we, know, we know that iOS 5 is one number above iOS 4. We've seen part, parts of Lion, and uh, Apple has already just simply said it's going to be about iCloud. But I think what, uh, what everybody's mostly mystified about is how these three things are going to work together. Uh, I really anticipate this is going to be a really huge keynote in which I, I've compared it uh, to uh, the, not the release of the iPad, but actually the release of the first iPhone. I really think that Apple is going to be laying out what here's where the company is going for the next five years. Not a bunch of products that work harmoniously together, but a range of products that are in a sense, essentially one product uh, that articulates itself through your Mac screen, through your iPhone screen, through your iPad screen, whatever it is. So I'm hoping for, if, if it really is nothing more than, oh, and by the way, if you buy a Hootie and the Blowfish album on iTunes, you don't have to download it anymore. I'll be a little bit disappointed. I'll, right, I'll be up front. That is the one thing that the, everybody seems pretty certain of is that Apple has signed deals with the four major labels to include music in their cloud services. But, but what you're saying is where we've gone from, uh, from desktop and laptop uh, into a wider range of devices that work together, now we're going to get the icing on that cake uh, of, of cloud services so that not only do the devices work together, but they, they work independently uh, with a cloud network. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've already seen how useful Dropbox is when you simply have one shared network folder, especially when you have an API infrastructure so that third-party apps can simply incorporate that as a place where users find their files. I think that they're going to be going a lot bigger than that, and in which they're just going to be an implication that if you have uh, a, a Apple gear and if, you have, uh, a, if you're tied into the iCloud service, it really will no longer really matter what you've synced what device to, where you've stored a single file, where you are in the world, and what Apple device or Apple computer you want to connect back to. iCloud, is, I think, is going to be the glue that holds it all together. Uh, and I think, I think Apple's still a big fan of copper wire, so I don't think that 
uh, the, you're going to start to see computers that ship without USB devices uh, in much the same way that uh, the first iMac shipped without a floppy drive. I don't think they're saying we don't need USB anymore, uh, but I think that iCloud is going to be much, much more than just you know cloud files as we understand it. It's going to be a holistic approach uh, that's I think is going to surprise everybody. Andy, do you see a lot of changes happening as far as iCloud and the uh, and iWork? Not really. Uh, I think that there's going to be integrated support for all that sort of stuff. Uh, last week, they up they released new versions uh, of uh, iWork apps for the iPhone that had previously been only available for Mac OS and the iPad. Uh, and back then, I said that I think this is a pretty clear indication that Apple wants to make sure that whatever documents you have, it can be sent to any Apple device that you have, uh, which would which would have required that. Uh, now the pages documents that you create on your desktop, it's not enough that there's just a little open and read uh, function built into iOS for for your, uh, for your mobile, for your handheld device. Now there really needs to be an app that can actually edit and work on that sort of stuff. Uh, I might be reading too much into that, but that's really what I saw with it. And that's the sort of thing we're seeing. Not just one service that people can take or leave, but a holistic approach and an, a new direction for the company. Because yeah, I know that for me, having something that really replaces Google Docs, which drives me a little crazy. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny when we were paid, crazy. Well, when, when Google Docs was free, when I was using the free version, it was seamless. And so we bought a subscription from oh, the company. Yeah. And now it doesn't work at all. See, so yeah, I'm using the free version to, to prep all my shows in, and, and they work fine. No, no, that, that but it's not fine. ideal. Oh, no, it's not ideal. It's not great. But as soon as you pay for it, uh -huh. it doesn't work anymore. Why? Well, it just we can't, crashes. We, no, doesn't... we can't sync. So, so what happened? Mm. Like, I'm, I'll be, I was like in the middle of this week in photography, and it just said, no, you don't have access to this file anymore. Like my notes. <laughs> you know, it just turned right, right off. Well, you that's know. the problem is you're paying for it. Once, once you pay know, for it, they you know, know it's, it's Google, and they, they know, know you're locked in. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, if you're free, so then they have to keep wooing you to get you to pay for it. Exactly. And so I was just like, I don't. This, none of this happened before I started paying for it. But but if Apple created a Google Docs like system, would it, would it be as open? I would be hesitant to to want to standardize on oh, it. Oh, I don't. Because, I don't. I don't think Apple's going to really be big on uh, the Google Docs approach. Yeah, I think they've yeah. already. They've, I think they've already pretty clearly said that we like HTML5. We think it's really really ambitious. But there's still some things that where you want actual electrons in the device you're running it on uh, you don't want to run everything through a website right right now i mean one of these devices that i'm that i'm uh running my live blogs from is my Google Chrome notebook. Uh, and frankly, uh, this is probably the th only the second time in the past four months I've actually fired it up for anything useful because if I want to actually get work done uh, and I don't necessarily need to be in groupware mode, I'd much rather have one of these nice little desktop devices or notebooks. So uh, Andy, you were saying, or I'm, I'm sorry, Alex, you were saying that uh, Apple TV sort of points the way to what they might be doing here. Uh, as far as a, as a cloud service, because Apple TV is really built to just work off the network, but well, Apple yeah. TV is very entertainment focused. Well, and and I said I think that that's the dark the dark horse in my uh, you know uh, in my opinion that I don't you know that there's been no rumors about or anything yeah, is the yeah. idea of opening up that Apple TV too to to allowing us to have more access to, you know basically run applications of a trackpad with an with an Apple with an iOS app. Not some of the stuff isn't ideal, but being able to turn if I had if I was able to take that USB and hook a web camera into it. It's really getting close to the Jetsons really fast. I, you know? I think Apple TV is, is, it might end up being the banner, banner boy for iCloud because that's the device that's built to work specifically on the iCloud. Uh, cool. And then your iPhone and your iPad are sort of one foot in each world because you have some storage and, and, and your iPad especially is good for docs. And then laptops and desktops obviously you know, are, are meant for that productivity that Andy's talking well, about. Well, and I, I know that I become much more sensitive. The more I travel, I have a couple laptops. I've got my iPad, my iPhone, everything else. And I know that sent, having central access to the, those files would, you know, has become much more of an issue for me. Uh, um, I think that, you know, Dropbox is a great add-on that people use for some of this stuff. But obviously, uh, as a Mac user, having that totally integrated into the system rather than somebody else's service, uh, you know, a lot of us are willing to just kind of go, well, it'd be more seamless if it was, you know, like uh, when I look at my, the seamless nature of uh, how I move stuff around between Aperture and iPhoto or, you know, because when I'm on the road to test both of them, I, mm -hmm. my rule is when I'm on the road, I'm using iPhoto. When I come home, I'm using, you know, Aperture uh, on, on my big library. And, but being able to mail stuff to people and move stuff around and put it up my mobile me and, and move, you know, and all of that stuff. The promise of iDrive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finally fulfilled. Well, and I think that those are the things that, um, you know, have, I think a lot of Mac users are willing to give up some, you know, scalability and some openness uh, for uh, ease of use. You know, I think that what Apple's good at uh, a lot of times, and I think what we'll see here is not necessarily um, something new and revolutionary. 
I think what we're going to see more likely is um, taking a bunch of stuff and saying we're going to make it a lot easier. Because for a lot of us, you know, we're doing a lot of other things. I fiddle with a lot of electronics, but there are a large number of things that I don't want to think about. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to think about it. And so, like these, all these little back back end deals make it a lot easier. Or back end processes. The uh, the uh, announcement has gone out at uh, at they're in Moscone, right? Uh, to switch the devices to silent. So, Andy, Alex, yep. if you you would switch your devices to silent. I'm always on silent. <laughs> uh, Andy, uh, it looks like they're going to get started here in a couple minutes. Uh, any any last uh, predictions? Before we uh, before we let you go, uh, I think that if there's anything else that I would I might uh, might predict, it's that they're going to find more places to put iOS. Uh, now, anything they have that is an embedded device, like uh, like their uh, like their uh, their routers and their Wi-Fi device, their Wi-Fi routers, I think is now going to be iOS. Even if they don't, even if developers don't have access to it, and even if the user can't really appreciate that, it just seems like an easy way to make any one of these devices really powerful. Now that I have now they have these these A processors that they can they can pretty much embed in anything. Uh, I think that's it makes a it makes a it makes a sensible thing sensible move for Apple to do. Huge pause in the music in the hall. Everyone got silent, and then "I Feel Good" by James Brown started to play. Drink if you got him. A little, uh, a little commentary on Mr. Jobs there, possibly, because everyone has a question about how he feels. Usually, <laughs> he feels good. He feels good. That's good. James Brown that's feeling healthy. That's, that's well. You, you knew that he would know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I did. That's the other thing. I, I'm interested to see how they handle this. It seems like a, a pretty seamless as far as the present. The presentation aspect of this always interests me as well. Uh, they have, for years now, been bringing in executives to do portions of the announcement more and more. And I think uh, they're sort of formalizing that with this, where S Steve Jobs will be on stage saying hello and then handing it over for everything and then saying goodbye. And, and I, think that's, I think that's really important for, yeah. for Apple. Is to start is to start having people not see these these run by just Steve, and then uh, and then everyone gets familiar with more than just Phil Schiller. Uh, right. They get familiar with all different aspects of the company, and that's that's important in in the long term to right. get people used to seeing these other faces. Well, and I think that it's also I think it takes a lot of pressure off of Steve. I mean, the the thing that is behind the scenes here is that you know we we do live streams for large corporations and. This is there's like two or three days sometimes of rehearsals and planning and they, they do these they do these presentations over and over and over again to make sure that they're all going to work um, and uh, and that you know is something that I think that uh, Steve as he's recovering I don't think that's something he wants to do anyway yeah you know I think well and and we don't even have to be morbid about it the guy is going to want to retire at some point lights exactly. are now going down yeah. all right Andy we'll let you go okay. uh, I gotta go thanks for Check joining back. us for the pregame again remember. <laughs> Don't hate the players, hate the game. We'll be back after this. <laughs> All right, Andy will join us afterwards uh, for Mac Break Weekly with Alex Lindsay. Uh, Alex and I will be uh, sitting in, bringing you the live coverage. Now, if you if you do run across any good sources, by all means, put them, put them in the chat room for us. This is breaking news coverage of WWDC 2011. Steve Jobs coming out on stage to a, of course, standing ovation. And it may be a very quiet, uh, a quiet one. We haven't found an audio feed yet. So yep. we're um, or any uh, video feeds yet. So we're um, we're, we're keeping our eye. But we're open. keeping our eye on all of the big uh, live blogs, and and we'll be uh, doing the the sort of Ronald Reagan esque nineteen thirties era play by play yes. baseball. Now we should, we should see him. We should actually start faking up, foleying some sound effects. <laughs> you know, <sighs> Wait, look, you got to have the the horse hooves. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, you know, it's just, because Steve Jobs does walk very heavily. I'm clumping some coconuts. Yeah. Where did you get that coconut? <laughs> African or European? Yes. All right. Uh, breaking news of WWDC brought to you by Slingbox. We thank him for their support. And uh, the Apple Store, as everyone has been pointing out in the chat room, somebody uh, pointing it out right now, still not down. So, no, no, maybe not any products that are going on sale today, anyway. We'll, we'll see. It's very rare for an announcement. And, of course, Microsoft like decided to start talking about their TV product on the Xbox as soon as Steve Jobs walks on stage. <laughs> so we've got an awesome morning together. Thank you for coming so much, says Steve Jobs. Uh, 5,200 attendees. Of course, they always start with the numbers. So they're going to talk about attendees. They're going to talk about developers. They're going to talk about apps. This, this, is, this is the that, opening marketing. We have your attention, uh, and we're, gonna, we're going to tell you about how great life is while we have your attention. 
over 120 sessions, over 100 hands-on labs. And don't forget, folks, uh, those of you who are just consumers of Apple products and big Apple fans, this is the developers' conference. Uh, a lot of years at WWDC announcements, people get bored because there's a lot of software demos, a lot of talk about developer issues. That, that's what this is really for. Right. So, so it will go on like that. Let's see here. We got a, a link here. Um, did you see the link on the... Uh... Audio and video available? I don't want to give out the address, although everybody in the chat room has it. Coverage of WWDC live on Twit. Leo Laporte down at E3. He'll be doing our live coverage with Brian Brushwood from down there. I'm joined by Alex Lindsay today. Uh, and at the same time, Microsoft doing their Xbox announcement, showing off a new television uh, service. So a little competing announcements uh, going on right now. Steve Jobs on stage, though, at the Moscone Center. He's going to talk about, he says he's going to talk about Lion, iOS 5, and quote, some kind of interesting new cloud stuff. You know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I find it fascinating that they don't expand WWDC. I think at some point in time when you realize that you, you have, uh, uh, when you're selling out in hours, it seems like you could add another haul. That's all I'm saying. Well, and there, what is it? It's a, over $1,000, right? I think it's like $1,500 for, yeah. for the... But I'm just saying, I mean, they're, they're selling out in hours. I mean, you, th you think that eh, maybe we'd add another haul and maybe add another couple thousand. Is it two hours? Two hours it sold out. Yeah, so it's... Uh, you, um, you, you, it, would, it would... You know, I'm thinking that if, if it, you might give yourself two weeks. And the funny thing is they don't announce. You never know when they're... You know, then they pop it open and everyone is waiting. I guess that's, that keeps it exclusive, but... All right, they're going to start with uh, OS, or I'm sorry, with OS X Lion. Which one uh, are you reading? Phil Schiller and Craig Federighi are, are coming on stage. Phil, Phil now saying hello. I'm looking at the, this is my next.com. Okay. That and Mac rumors seem to be uh, seem pretty good. Yeah, they went they went quick through the uh, through the numbers portion or the you know the overall numbers portion. Steve Jobs was not on stage for very long before he handed it over to Phil. Now Phil is talking about the install base. So they're they're probably going to do a little numbering before each section here. I think I think we're looking at three mini keynotes essentially. Mac he says the Mac is kicking ass. Phil Schiller's words, not mine. And actually But it's a shiny white. Well, it's benders with, and uh we do, uh, we do have some good uh, uh, links for video in the chat room, and we're, we're working on verifying those and, and, and getting them ready, so we might be able to pass those along, at least get you some audio, if nothing else. PC market shrank over 1% this year. Eh, it's a little bit of, an, of, of a played statistic. Uh, PC market shrank because the netbook market collapsed. Uh, but oh, Because of the iPad. Apple, <laughs> Apple, Apple was able to, to you right. know grow just fine right and he's he's not talking about the ipad here he's he's saying well, say that the, but the netbook has collapsed largely because of tablets yeah exactly and, and, tablets and the tablets have are collapsed and, yeah but he's know. saying that mac laptop sales actually grew 28 percent. there are good little machines i think it's the best windows machine you can buy still yeah right that man maybe a thinkpad they're kind of mm -hmm. neck and neck for me but right. uh if you if you want to run windows uh consider a mac Right. If you can afford it, it's not the best bargain. I'd say ThinkPad my, if you yeah. want the best for your money. My whole thing is the reason that, I mean, I have, we, we're dual boot on almost every machine. And uh, our big thing is, is that when I buy a, a Mac, I have two operating systems or three operating systems rather than just one. Now they're uh, looking back at the past 10 years, showing what OS X looked like 10 years ago. <laughs> and by the way, days? it was a revolution in its day, says Phil Schiller. So... We can, uh, we, can, we can let them do a little reminiscing. I think that's fair. Ten years. It's big. And still on the same OS X platform. I mean, granted, it's, it's changed a lot from version to version, but we're not on OS 11. I don't know, and I don't think that's just nomenclature. I mean, I think the heart of this thing is still OS X Darwin. Oh, yeah, but I, you know, and I think that the, the real question, and maybe we'll see some hints of this today, uh, when you see the, uh, is, is really how, how much of these going to merge? Uh, between uh, the the desktop version and the and the iOS version, I think that we're going to continue to see that marriage or that intertwining um, occur. We got 250 new features coming in OS 10 Lion, and of which 10 will actually <laughs> on, on a day to day basis. Not to be a curmudgeon. Are we going to get an audio stream? We're just waiting for it to come up on the laptop here. 
First up, multi-touch gestures. So much has changed over the last 10 years. We built multi-touch trackpads into all our laptops, and now they're showing up the ju new multi-touch gestures for OS X. There have been a few multi-touch gestures up there. Yeah, I, I, the, the big thing that, the, the big feature that I want to see is is a common place to turn them off. I'm really in a bad mood this morning. I'm like, <laughs> You're grumpy. Kind of, grumpy. That's good. I'm a grump in a grumpy mood. I, you know, there's so many of these applications that you hit, you accidentally put two fingers down and you start rotating stuff and moving stuff around. And I'm like, okay, so I didn't want to do that. I almost never want to do that. Tap to zoom. So that's just, these are probably going to be similar to the iPad, I'm guessing. That, you know, tap to zoom is what you do on the iPad as well. Right. If you're pushing the system with multi touch, you don't need scroll bars, but they appear when you do. So I guess this is for OS X native or for Apple developed apps. Uh, Scroll bars go away. Everybody, it's so funny to me. It's like we've had the revolution of multitasking in the 80s that got rid of the one program at a time. Right. And we seem to be going back to, you know what's cool? One program at a time. Because you can screen. focus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. We can take you to the full, yeah, full screen is the next uh, next thing that we're talking about. But. All right. Here we go. Check. We'll, we'll stay with this as long as we, uh, as long as they let it go. Yeah, exactly. So we've worked on a number of our applications to bring them into the new full screen mode of buy-in system applications like Safari, Mail, iCal. I like applications, iPhoto, iMovie, GarageBand. I work with Keynote and Numbers and Pages. And all these applications go full screen so you have a great experience right out of the box. Here's an example of how it looks. This is now running full screen in, in Safari. You can have a beautiful place for viewing your documents. And now there's a new feature since we've got all this extra room on the left-hand side called the reading room. <coughs> Keep track of things we want to get to later. Here's iCal running full screen. Here's preview showing you PDF documents running full screen. You can just have a beautiful experience like we've never had on a computer before. Uh, for well, actually, the, uh, I, I believe we had uh, that experience on the Commodore 64. <laughs> Uh, as uh, we've we've had beautiful full screen experiences before, it's just it's funny. It's funny to me that that's become the new big thing. So where who are we getting this from? It's uh, it, oh, obviously somebody else doing their own commentary as yeah. well. But uh, it, if it's it's a uStream feed, I think is that right? It's OMT WWDC keynote. So. And this is a bird's eye view of everything going on in your system. On the main window, well, that's the current desktop you're working on with all the documents now organized by what application is running on them. You can tap on any document and bring it to the front. That's right there, center for you to work on. Up above are all your spaces. So you can have multiple desktops. You can have multiple full screen apps running. Get to anyone with a single tap. So you don't have and multiple, you know, you, 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 it's kind of weird. It was to be full screen, but multiple spaces. Expose and space is now unified as mission control. You use spaces? I uh, used to when I ran Windows a lot more. I'd keep Windows open in one and virtual. Uh, I don't use it much these days, though. Mm. I always think I should use it, but I never actually. If you're going to have full screen apps, though, you need something like Mission Control, though. And now we're going to have Craig coming up to uh, demo more of these features. And again, those of you who are like, get to iCloud, this is the developers conference. This is of very big interest to developers, what kind of features they're going to have to be able to take advantage of. How simple this UI looks, because there are no scroll bars. It's a really clean look. We don't need scroll bars anymore, because we can simply push the content with our fingers. We can flick get momentum, get a nice little bounce. The page feels really alive beneath your fingers. You can also... So I guess the Magic uh, Trackpad is not going to be an optional really device if we're, if we're moving away from like uh, scroll bars. I mean, it's, the, nice that's the other thing to look at is you will need... How much of this can you turn off? Place. Yeah, right. If I want to smart zoom, I just double tap with two fingers. It smart zooms in, double tap again, smart zooms out. That's very similar to an iPad function. Really mm -hmm. cool with gestures, and that's how we can navigate in Safari. I'm going to drill into a story. And then after I've read it, I want to actually get back to the previous page. Well, now I can just take two fingers and swipe the page. Oh, so the back the button, back you use two fingers page. to swipe, and it has a little animation. It definitely looks like they're really working on removing all of the infrastructure. You know, all the little clickable things, and everything becomes a. Safari browsing history. Just like that. Next up, I'd like to show you 
full screen apps. Come nice along to iPhoto here. You can see that iPhoto has adopted Lion's standard new full screen control. Next up, I'd like to show you single tasking. IPhoto full screen. It's a great way to look at my photo album. If I want to get back to my desktop, take three fingers. I can just swipe the desktop, swipe my photo away and back to my desktop. So three fingers swipe to get back to the desktop if you're in full screen mode. It's actually right there. Take a peek at it, go back, just like that. And that's doing it right. If you if you really, a lot of people do want this kind of full screen experience, but being able to make it easy to get back and forth is key. To my dashboard. You can see Safari supports full screen as well. Let's go take our Safari window full screen. So now we have our dashboard over our desktop over here to the left. Didn't F11 all, always make browsers full screen? My photo's still there full screen as well. You'll notice how Safari's making great use of all the I usually have a lot of windows. Screen for my content. But if I want to get at my bookmarks bar, my menu, just go to the top. See, they slide right out like that really nicely. And when I want to exit full screen, I have a control right there in the upper right. Animates right back out. Let's take a look now. Photo now this is a different take from what Windows or what Microsoft showed off for Windows 8, where they have the ability to go into the desktop, but it's not it's not the same metaphor of swiping left and right. It's it's swiping it. It's yeah. It's going it's going down. <laughs> Those of you on audio, uh, Craig has some birds flying around his head. And tracking. I don't know if they're angry they're tracking birds, but they, yeah, they're tracking. They look like happy birds. They don't and, like. You can also use this face tracking technology to perform some targeted facial enhancements. <laughs> oh my God. So the facial enhancements you could do in a photo booth are now available for video, essentially. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. So playing around, yeah, that's great stuff. <laughs> you can spend hours at this. Full screen and my kids will spend hours. Users <laughs> love to get us a lot of things at once, and that often means that they have a lot of windows. In fact, my desktop often looks a little bit more like this, right? Good demo fodder, but not so how do terribly I get useful. Across all no. those different activities, but like you should not underestimate fingers. your kids sitting oh, there for yeah. hours uh, playing with Photo Booth. From here, I can get it any window I want. So if I want to get it iCal here, I click. Comes forward, sweep back to the this is like ex the next generation of expose. Yeah, they've basically taken expose and spaces, merged them into something called mission control, which gives you expose at some times and allows you to swipe between spaces. Three fingers up, and I'm back in mission control. I can also quick look at my windows. If I just hit space bar here, get a better look at my calendar, or take this pile of preview windows and spread them apart with a little gesture up. This is everybody trying to reinvent the windowing interface that has been fairly unchanged for 20 years, 30 years. Well, and I think that it, you know, it's, it is figuring out that we just have a lot of stuff going on these days, and you have to figure out a better way to manage it. I mean, this is the challenge. Before, we were excited that we had a couple applications running. Yeah. And now, you know, you really do have to get into this situation. I need more screens. That's <laughs> yes, exactly. I think that's the key for me. I'm not, I'm not sure that this... Uh, this solves all my problems. Go over to my desktop, and if I want to, then take even an entire app and all of its windows and create a new space for that, I can click on the preview icon, drag the whole pile to the corner, I've just created another space. And so if you have multiple browser windows open, you can drag them into a space. They delete, and the windows fly right back to my original desktop space. So that is mission control. Thank you very much. Mission Control is a souped-up expose yeah. that well, well designed. can take advantage of the next spaces. generation. Yeah, it's. I would say it's. A, it is a revolutionary. Uh, I mean, not evolutionary, not revolutionary. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I guess you can use the magic mouse for some of this stuff. But next up, the Mac App Store. We launched the Mac App Store this past January. So this is, I, I believe, where we'll be able to access your applications in a different way. We've seen this in OS X land before. They're, they're talking about the App Store. Years, there have been many software channels to buy PC software, and they all work kind of the same way. You hop in your car, you drive downtown, you buy a DVD if they happen to have it, you drive back home. See, that's not what I do. What I do is I go to opensourcemac.org, and I download free programs. software right from the comfort of your own home on your Mac. And in the last six months, something incredible has happened. So I have to say that I order very little. So if I, the first place I go now is Mac App Store. And it's, man, I, 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 if it's not there, I'm like, okay, I'll think about it.
And the developers that have gotten on board with the Mac App Store have seen some great success too. For example, Autodesk. They brought their Sketchbook Pro application to it, and since they put it on the Mac App Store, they've seen a million new users on the Mac. I wonder, they didn't split that up, Sketchbook. They didn't notice they didn't say Spe Sketchbook Express versus Sketchbook Pro. Mm -hmm. Sketchbook Express being free. And something that, if you own a Mac, you absolutely should have. And small, great developers, like Pixelmator, has brought the amazing new image editing application to the Mac App Store. They've seen a quadrupling of their revenue. In fact, they made a million dollars in their first 20 days. So the Mac App Store has been a big hit for large and small developers. So what's new in Lion? Well, first, it's built right in. You don't have to go and download it and get it and decide to use it. It's built in for every Mac user. And there's a lot of great features for you developers to take advantage of. Some of them you're used to from the iOS app store, like in-app purchases. And this, this, none of this is new. They're just kind of reviewing what, right. what's been available in the, in the app store. You can make your applications more secure. There's a built-in sandboxing method now in the Mac app store. And One more thing, dot NL is where we're getting this feed, by the way. We give them thanks. I believe they're embedding it for some other people. part of the whole experience of Lion, which you'll hear more about. Number five, a simple but powerful idea, Launchpad. Wouldn't it be great if no matter where you are in your system, if you want to get in an application and quickly launch it, you can with a simple gesture. Well, now you can. With Launchpad, you simply make a simple gesture, a pinch motion, and all your applications fly onto your screen, no matter where they are in your system. Yeah, that's as, it's easier said than done. He, he hasn't seen that number of applications I have on my computer. You can swipe. So, okay, they're, so this they're is basically take, yeah, they're taking the iOS metaphor and making it available. I think this is a good thing. Yeah, uh, because I I would like to have an easier way to get to applications. Of course, on Although, iOS I just open up his search. On, uh, honestly, yeah, I do I do command space and type in the name of the app yeah. most of the time. Uh, I don't know if this will replace that. It yeah. seems like it's a great idea, but it's so much easier to say, I know I need one password right now, command space, one password. You have to run applications, sometimes you quit them, you go back, and you're back at the starting point. You, get, you, you're, you're, you have no more windows open, your documents aren't open, you usually have to pick a template. Why can't applications get you back to work quickly? Well, that's what Resume does. Now when you launch an application in Lion, it brings you right back to where you were when you quit. It remembers what documents you were open. It remembers the text that was selected in the document. It remembers where the palettes were and the windows and everything, just how you like it. And Resume doesn't work just on an application. It works system-wide. So the next time you have to shut down and restart your, your Mac. By the way, uh, the, the Xbox, uh, the Microsoft announcement at E3 going on right now, and they're bringing YouTube to the Xbox. Because... Just thought I'd, I'd throw that That's in. That's just great. So did it look like we uh, we lost the feed, or they they finally got caught? Someone got a, got a tap on the window, T a tap on the shoulder. One more thing. Dot nl was where we were getting that feed, and uh, they may they may have been pinched. Yes. Uh, we'll now get a feed from outside of the uh, keynote room. Uh, Phil, Phil is saying, uh, according to uh, this is my next, uh, resume. Uh, from the beginning of a computer, you've had to run apps. If you close them, you start from the beginning. Why can't apps get you back to work quickly? Now when you launch an app in Lion, it remembers what you were doing and where you were, uh, even down to the text you had selected. So it's saving the state of an app every time you close it. But without right. staying resident in memory, I'm assuming, otherwise it... Yeah, it's just saving would, all yeah. of the pointers to where everything... All apps resume when you log in. So then also um, autosave. This is number seven. So from the beginning of, uh, so basically it's, so, and, and autosave I think is, uh, I just want to see how it actually works. I mean, I like to save in a very specific way. So if it doesn't do incremental saves, you know, I save lots and lots of versions of things um, to I, make sure that I, I like I like autosave as a uh, as a kind of dummy protector, right? As long as it's in between, and when I actually save, it throws that away. As long as that's only, I love the idea of it constantly autosaving every five minutes or every one minute or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but when it when I say save, I can it's going to throw that. You know, it's not replacing the file that I had saved already. It's creating a basically a floating file, and that's that's what I'm not. Um, you want to make sure that it, when it reverts to the to the most recent version, after, I don't want to start writing over what I already. Yeah, had. exactly. You know, that's the, that's and I, and without hearing them, we don't know. But I think that that is. Uh... You can select lock if you don't want it to autosave. 
Right. You'll see the name of your docs is actually a mem menu. If you don't like what you've saved, you can revert. Right, there you go. Duplicate the document from the title bar and start working on another version. Uh, there you go. Again, this is, this is all nice tweaks to pages. Well, it is something that is, it's one of those things like, so for instance, when I write articles, I often write them in mail. I know that sounds crazy. Uh huh. Because no, no, mail's no, auto saving. I, I've I've done that. So yeah. mail's auto saving, yeah. and I know that if anything happens, it's going to be bam. You know, it, it's and I have to admit that that's why I don't do it in text edit or here don't you, do it in pages. Here you go, Alex. The next feature is called versions. All along, auto saving saving your document, and it's yep. saving all your versions of the document. So it's go. it's doing what Google Docs does locally. Right. right. Uh, and I I actually compose a lot of times in text edit or simple note. And then put it in a Google Doc. Well, and the reason but, and, I don't I don't own Pages, right? I own Microsoft Word, and I never launch it. Well, the funny thing for me is that it, we do it differently depending on the application. So, for instance, we are uh, I when I'm doing text documents, oftentimes they start in Google Docs because I'll start writing them, um, and then I'll have other people working on them. And then we want when we want to make it look pretty, we'll bring it back into Pages. Looks like there's kind of a time machine uh, element element to this, so you can you can you see several versions. In, in that stacked uh, metaphor that you see in yep. Time Machine, you can scroll back to the one you want. That's nice. I like that. That'll I, be it's, useful. It's a lot easier to visualize what you're looking for that way than, than you know, in Google Docs versions. It just gives you a list of time codes right. and who edited it. Now, sometimes it's hard to guess which one is the right one. Yeah. Craig is back on stage for a demo. So it looks like what we're going to do here is Phil's going to take us through OS X, right? And he's got a guy to come up and do demos. I bet you Steve will come back, introduce iOS. You know, right, we'll, see the next, we'll see the next pair. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's the way this is going to go. And now for something completely different. Yeah. Will we get a one more thing? I don't know. <sighs> oh, and by the way, iPhone 4S or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's start with Launchpad. Uh, I get an instant view of all the apps on my system. A single click launches it. Uh, you can also use a four-finger pinch to get in. So you can launch Launchpad by clicking on an icon, or, or you can do the, the touch four-finger pinch. Now, four-finger pinch, I'm using on the iPad as close, as, as close your... Uh, if, you, if you go to the developer's... Uh, and if you go to the developer's iOS... And plug in your iPad. You don't even have to pay for the developer's system. Right. It'll give you the option to enable uh, those uh, new gestures. Four Finger closes an app. Right. Here, Four Finger's launching an app. Hmm. Now, granted, those iPad gestures are not official. Those are developer right. gestures. Right. So, so they so may change maybe that. They're, that's, they're still, it's a I may be doing progress. myself a disservice by using it early. By getting ahead. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You'll be confused for a long time. And they're still talking about how awesome the App Store is. Yeah, Let's add Twitter can. to the Mac. That's the one app I've purchased from the App Store, although it's free, so I didn't really purchase it. I purchased a lot of apps on the App Store. I just, I just don't. I buy, a, I download a lot of free stuff. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of uh, computers, and so one of my things is, is when I buy it on the Mac App Store, I can seamlessly install it on three or four computers at one time. I'm told it's up to five. Uh, I haven't tested gone past that mm -hmm. but the idea you know the idea is i open up the mac app store and i just go install 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 and all the way you know all the way down and boom it's done now I, what i don't understand is now craig is saying i'd like to show you just how fantastic the mac is with lion when working with documents isn't that what phil just showed us well he's actually showing you phil didn't show you he told you but there were screens yeah, but, he, but he didn't walk you through it. You didn't actually do it so phil was doing an expanded version of tell him what you're going to tell him and now craig is going to tell him and then he's going to come back him. and tell you what he told you. Exactly. Okay. Although I don't think he does a lot of telling what he told you. He just does it. There's just a lot of, uh, of that, okay, now we're going. great. Yeah. <laughs> great work. Now well, actually, Steve go. will do that at the very end. He'll yes. say, we showed you this. We and, showed you that. And it was magical. And it was revolutionary. And it was fantastic. And it was really great. It's really great stuff. Lion was saving my document all along. So when I launch pages again, everything is where it was. Perfect restore. So they're just demoing how that worked. Which may be useful and may, may not be useful when you're going from one client's office to another. Oh, let me open that document. Oh, uh, oh yeah. that's the bid numbers. Mm. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> take those uh, off of there. Let's move on now. <gasps> that was your competitor's order. Yeah, exactly. No, don't look at that. Uh, but, the, you know, 
they are saving a history of versions of a document, and I think that's good. Right. No, I think that's going to be great. I think you can get used to those. Again, that's why I was. That's why I composed the first draft on in mail or Google Docs, is because I know that if anything happens, I'm, I have it all there. Well, you don't. You don't. Have, you can lay off the command S. Exactly. <laughs> with this, you don't have to be constantly paranoid. When I uh, when we, when I was uh, in um, for the one brief moment that I was in school, <laughs> when we were working on graphics, uh, we had a we had a teacher that everyone randomly once or twice a week would just would pull the plug on all the computers. Like he had a central switch that he could switch off. Oh, wow. And so all these art guys would be in Photoshop working on the thing and suddenly, do and he and learn to back up. You know, and yeah. The first two weeks he did, he just turned the light off and sink said, or swim. But wow. after that he would, he would do that just to, uh, and it was good. It was good training. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Beta like, testing. It usually did he, did he also good. teach swim classes by throwing children into the pool? And, Evidently. You know, yes. Yelling, Kick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Left arm faster. Uh, if you're going through the versions, you just click on the version you want. It's restored. Uh, Fill is uh, back. When I restore a doc, I sometimes don't want to take the whole doc. Sometimes I just want a piece. You can do that with versions. Uh, that's interesting. You can take a piece of an old version and put it in the new. Mm, airdrop. Number nine. Airdrop. What is airdrop? We don't know. Is this how we teach kids to swim? Yes. <laughs> See, we got, we got right into it. I'm guessing it's a Dropbox clone. Yes. Yeah. And one thing that uh, Aaron, who's sitting in, in the stu studio, said, what about if, that, if you save that state, uh, it could be a state in the cloud, you know, so that this gets back into being people, being, multi-people being able to edit. Right, right. So not quite as seamless as a, as a Google Docs, but right. but if you know who, you know, for, for ah. some organized. Airdrop is a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing utility. Peer-to-peer? -peer, isn't that illegal? Yes. That's no. only used for torrents. Yes, Evidently not. Apple is now creating its own torrent. Well, we better, uh, you know, this is a really good move for a lot of well, reasons. In other words, it may, helps make the argument that you shouldn't block on protocol. Right. To ISPs. That's a whole different matter. So the interesting thing here, so this, this really looks like it could be um, Dropbox. Right. Yeah. So uh, you you have a list of computers uh, that you're sharing with and you drop, you drag the file uh, to the computers that are located, and then you know Shauna's MacBook Air suddenly has access to your your green materials document. I don't know that it's a cloud yeah. thing yet. Are we getting some audio back? No. Okay. We're getting our audio back. We're getting our audio back. Yeah, we don't want that. Uh, we we already know what that, we said. Uh, that, uh, okay, Ilse. <laughs> oh, we get some Dutch audio. That's one more thing. NL. I'm sure they're trying to figure out how to get their stream back too. But I bet their guy got pinched. Uh, number 10, a completely new version of mail in Lion. Uh-oh. Alex, how are you going to compose your documents? I, Is it going to change? Well, it's all changed now because I, I, I now have, ver I have version. So uh, I, I don't need to, to compose my documents. In. Uh, so we get a uh, two or three column view. It looks like iOS mail unifying the experience across platforms. Hopefully it works better than iOS mail. Do you have a problem with it? Ugh. <laughs> I mean, it's very limited. Well, if that's what it, you mean. Yeah, I, I get you. You know, it, the thing is, is that it works it depends for on me, how much email you, get. you can't do. With if you it, get yeah. more than 200 emails a day, which I do mm -hmm. regularly, it really doesn't work because it always wants to go back and you know, it's only going to download a certain number of them. And I, I have issues where stuff shows up on my iPad, doesn't show up on my computer, mm -hmm. doesn't show up on my iPad. Yep. Um, you know, you can't figure out why it's not finding certain emails that you can find on your. It's laptop. not good you for can't. searching for things at all. No, and it, yeah. and it's not if you get. Once again, if you have a normal consumer amount of 30 or 40 emails or 50 emails a day, it's fine. Yeah, I but get a couple hundred get a, a day, uh, but I, 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 I'm able to keep, keep on, on top of them. So I least, am, and I use it a I lot. But I can't see them all at once. I, I know what you're saying. And, and, and it feels like there's something going on a lot of times where I can't find certain ones. So. Well, anyway, on OS X Lion, uh, search suggestions prompts you when you select one, uh, becomes a search token, and also a conversation view. So what these, I, what this I, doesn't have the problems that iOS has. Well, and I would love to see, uh, you know, in-depth searches. I mean, it's one of the few things that I miss from Entourage is being able to set up, you know, a really complex, I want this, but not that, but this, but not that, which you can kind of do in the search menu, but you can't do when you're in mail. I just want to say I want to find this mail. Well, it looks like they've improved that at least. Yeah. Uh, shows your messages just as they were sent, but it's completely compatible with people who don't have Lion, so you can still see that conversation now. And Craig's coming back up a little quicker this time. He won't have as much to demo for us. They're, they're just showing conversations yeah, the con yeah, and the conversation search. Conversation view is interesting. Craig surprisingly loves the new mail in line. 
I mean, I would. I was. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I bet you. I thought he was going to come out and be upset about. I'm it. I'm a little disappointed okay. in Mail. Yeah, this, this is kind of. And then he gets. I'm going to show you. He gets anyway. yanked up off the stage yes. immediately. You know, you should have seen the features that I was asking for. <laughs> that would have been awesome. But Steve said no. Yeah. He says no to everything. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if, if you're uh, not looking at one of the live blogs uh, along with us, the the look is very similar to what you're used to on an iPad. Again, if, we're, if what we're seeing is the slow merge between Lion and iOS, I think. Apparently, all the live blogs are saying that Craig really likes he's waxing. new mail. Yeah. And now he's demonstrating search. And again, it's a more intelligent search, so, so it predicts, it does some predictive text and it allows you to create tokens. Even suggests subject lines that might apply to a few key presses. That's interesting. Search uh, is is being demonstrated right now at the WWDC keynote. For we're in the middle of the OS 10 Lion portion of the announcement. We're going to hear about iOS and iCloud. Want to thank our sponsor, Slingbox, it allows you to watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Uh, we're bringing you live coverage of the world's most important tech news as it happens, as usual, right here on This Week in Tech. I'm Tom Merritt, joined by Alex Lindsay uh, at uh, live.twit.tv. And with uh, Slingbox's help, we're able to bring you this coverage. Slingbox lets you watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Plug in your Slingbox at home, plug it into your internet, plug it into your television. You don't have to pay anything extra. Once you paid for the Slingbox, you're done. Uh, watch it on your iPod Touch, your laptop, or your iPad. To get started with Slingbox... Go check it out at Best Buy or Amazon. It, it's going to free you up. You're going to be able to watch your television when you're out of the country. No region codes. Anywhere you go, you can use your DVR, any of the stuff you get at home. Check it out, slingbox.com. For more information, we thank them for their support of breaking news right here on Twit. So we had some reports that uh, Mobile Me was down, but uh, mine is working just fine. I will check out mine, too, here in a second. Uh so conversation view, they're they're demonstrating that now. Uh, search and conversation. You're you're a big mail user. Any of that stuff? Uh, yeah, it looks interesting. You away? Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, you know, I, I uh, it looks fine. It looks fine. I mean, I I don't need the advanced search methods is important to me. So I'll be very interested to see how uh, you know how well those work because mm -hmm. searching through my email is the big issue. You know, it's uh, well, it looks pretty smart. Right. Uh, and, and being able to f have that stuff organized and, uh, you know, one of the things we've just started to really um, uh, use a lot within our company is a, is a service uh, called Chatter, which kind of an, is, a, is dropping our email usage dramatically because mm -hmm. internally we're able to just kind of pass notes back and forth and it's kind of a cloud-based um, uh, communication. And I have to admit that the more we start to use it, the more I see the I'm not going to be using email as often, so... Other than mobile me, uh, because I put in the wrong password telling me to renew my account, which is opposite to the rumors that you are not going to have to renew your account anymore, mobile me is working for me as well. Yep. Although I'm only seeing me. Oh, no, that's it's got my calendar too. You see that there's a there's another link that went in. I haven't used the web version of mobile me in a, quite a long time. No, I don't use it very often. And then we'll go it's hoog tijd om door te gaan. Uh, we got more Dutch people talking. Evidently, the Dutch are very excited New about New APIs this. are going to allow devs to utilize things uh, shown in the Apple apps, so you, you'll be able to put them in your own. Uh, I, I'm assuming things like search and conversation view, uh, some of the things, uh, for, uh, some of the gestures. Lion will only be available on the Mac App Store. Only? No yes. boxes? Yep. Actually, I prefer that, frankly. Oh, I prefer it. I prefer it. I, I just think that I think that Apple is obviously pressing very, very hard on this is the platform to distribute your software. I I I I, pref I, I want that. I want also to be able to make a backup of it, though. So I I, I want to see how this works. See, I guess for me, the thing is, I don't I don't feel like I need to get a backup. Well, what if I don't have an internet connection and I have a crash? Oh, then you're screwed. And I need to, I mean, the, the, the constant is like, oh, pop in your OS ten disk and boot off of that. And then you can right. see what happens. Well, can't do that if I don't have it burned to a disk. Right. You yeah. can use it on all your authorized devices, though. 
So you buy it once. They haven't given us a price yet, have they? No, not yet. I haven't seen one yet. But that you, you're essentially only selling family packs now. Well, and that's what. But that's what. That thirty bucks. Everyone's in the chat room saying thirty bucks. Twenty nine ninety nine. Wee for five devices. Yeah. So now, now your OS now costs six dollars. Now Eileen is wishing we had kept a single uh, login <laughs> for our Apple accounts. Yeah, all Actually, the thirty bucks. It's easy. And you might as well buy two. It's yeah, exactly. Put them on all the different. Wow. You know, it starts to when you when you start thinking about this enterprise wide, it really starts to be a hard sell to upgrade to Microsoft Office Professional or whatever it is for three hundred dollars or three hundred and thirty dollars when you're thinking about buying thousands of those units or or, or let's say you're buying thousands of them you're getting for a hundred dollars but it, you know now it, you know it, th those numbers have to start adding up for new for dev large preview consumers. today available for everyone else in July so coming soon uh, and Scott Forstall now taking the stage to talk to us about iOS. No Steve Jobs in between. I think Steve's going to come out and talk about iCloud. Yeah. I don't, think, gonna, I don't think we're going to see handle that, that. Yeah, that I section. Think, I think that's going to be, because that's the thing that they have to, this is all almost, this is all the evolutionary things, things that are slightly better, things that are slightly easier. Uh, you know, it's not the big new stuff. Who's the guy with his shirt untucked on stage? That's just not very Mr. Apple. Forstall. He's, you know, he's iOS. He's a little bit more casual. He's a that's, more, I guess that's know. it. It's this mobile. He, yeah, can't, exactly. he can't have his shirt tucked in. He's, yeah, come on. He's walking around with his iPhone and his iPad. Yeah, we're hip. We're hanging out. Uh, doing a little numbers, 200 million iOS devices. iOS install base. Well, they've, they've picked their numbers, uh, and they're going to put the ones that have iOS installed the largest, but their numbers say 44% iOS, 28% Android, 19% RIM and 9% other. That includes iPad. Uh, that, that's yeah. how they get to that big number because Android doesn't have a lot of tablet installs yet. Yeah, I, you know, it was interesting. I, uh, I realized why the iPad was so successful sitting in the Washington, D.C. airport. I was in uh, uh, IAD a couple days ago, and the guy sitting next to me in the lounge, uh, in the Skyline, Skyline or Star Alliance lounge, was 80 years old, and he's sitting there with his iPad, like, in look at you know reading stuff and i walked out of the lounge and the kid in my the three-year-old that was sitting in my uh like next to me waiting for the flight was playing with his ipad and and i was like it's those two extremes is why it's growing so quickly so, 25 million ipads sold in the in uh, the first 14 months just going back to OS X really quickly, one thing that uh, one implication of this new way of installing is is going to be make it harder for Hackintoshes. Uh, not impossible, obviously they'll be able to get it, but they have to go through a few more hoops. Yes, uh, they're going to have to have a Mac to download it off of at least to get the first copy. Yep, uh, and then be able to, you know, take it take it from there and fool the system into thinking they got it through the Mac app store. Well, again, you know, one of the interesting things about all of this is that it's really going to tighten all of the software. I mean, that is the thing that Leo constantly talks about is the danger of, you know, things like the question is, is would Handbrake ever make it to the Mac app store? You know, that's the, those are the kind of things that, you know, um, and that, but that market, and maybe for the freeware market, you can still find stuff on the web and install it. But I think for the paid market, it's going to be very hard for a developer to, to make that work. Somebody in the chat room has a paste bin link to an iOS 5 download already. Number one retailer of music in the world, of course. Uh, size and momentum of the App Store is hard to fathom. Of course, talking about the iOS App Store now. Uh, Scott Forstall on stage. 90,000 apps made specifically for the iPad. So focusing, for focusing a lot on the iPad in this talk. That indicates to me... Our customers have downloaded more than 14 billion apps from the App Store. Amazing. That indicates that this, this uh, iOS 5 is going to have a lot of iPad-specific fun in it, uh, especially if we're not getting a new iPhone device. Uh, they're essentially saying, we're going to take the iPad 2 and make it even cooler, and the iPhone will benefit too. Apple has paid out more than $2.5 billion to devs, and they have a very large check up on the screen to prove it. <laughs> Pay to the order of developers. They, they wrote that check. They just wrote it out to developers. I, yeah. I, I don't know who that developer is, but I want to be that. I'm company. a developer. That's I'd like to cash this. Uh, of course, they're, they're, now they're just touting the App Store. Talking, yeah. uh, they're, they're showing uh, 
Oh, what's this the one with the birds that coast? I was playing it constantly for like two weeks, and then I then I stopped. They're not angry. No, it's the happy coasty bird. You know, uh, did you play Rio? Did you play Angry Bird Rio? I, I don't, don't play Angry Birds. <laughs> I I know I've just lowered myself in your estimation. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was just. I was just like I. I was tiny ones. That's the name of it. I, you know, I didn't like Rio because I didn't want to free the birds. I didn't want to free the little birds. I want to kill the pigs. Yeah, it was, it was not, not fun. Not it was not. Freer. It was not fun. I I wasn't. I wasn't getting my bacon on. Meat is murder, Alex. Yeah, I know. There's a Smith song about that, isn't there? Or an album, anyway. 225 million accounts with credit cards. What is he leading up to here? <laughs> when we want to sell something, we can sell it quickly. Yeah, this almost seems like this seems like a, more like the iCloud part of the announcement because he keeps talking about how many accounts they got, how they're the biggest music store. So let's talk about the future. Flying cars. Yes. Geodesic domes. And iOS 5. The crowd is clapping. Yay. It's, an, it's incredible. This is incredible for devs and, uh, and customers. It's a major release. Hence, we, named, we changed the number. <laughs> this isn't 4S. This isn't 4B. More than 1,500 APIs and tools, and users will get more than 200 new features. And they're going to show us 10 of those new features now. These, are, these will be the best 10. Uh, first one is notifications. We already have notifications. So how does notifications change? Obviously, uh, we're going to get better notifications. Right now, it's just a pop-up screen that says, something happened. Yes. Hopefully, we'll be able to do something with it. He says, pops up, pop-ups, so annoying. Yes, they are. Better UI on the way. What's it going to look like? Stop telling me we have, they've pushed 100 billion notifications. I don't really care. <laughs> yes, we know notifications are popular. Thank you. They get turned on automatically all the time. So, yeah, these new notifications... Uh, are going to look a little bit like Android, it sounds like. Taking a page. Although, you know what? Apple is not, not rem you know, they're not afraid to, to take a good design if it's a good design. They're not, they're not going to worry about right. being called imitators. Right. Uh, they're just going to say, we do it best. Notification Center is the, uh, is the name of this new feature. Can get to it any time from anywhere by swiping down from the top. You see what's going on. Single place, which combines all the notifications. And the crowd is apparently clapping for this. They've, they've, they, they say they've solved the notifications issue. Single-handedly. <laughs> by imitating Android. Better. Any notification that comes from apps comes here, and they've added stocks and weather. So this is, this is better notifications, for sure. And they have little icons by them, and... and uh, the thing is, so you're still going to get pop-ups to tell you if there's a new notification in there, though? I mean, I, yeah, I, I know that I can go and swipe down and get to them. I do want an option for it to, con to interrupt me. Because More information on important. the lock screen as well. This is something people have been clamoring for. Right. For any notification in the lock screen, you can slide your finger across to go directly to the app. Don't have to unlock. Well, you're unlocking, essentially, by swiping. Do you still have to put in your PIN, your unlock number? All right, we're going we're gonna to answer all these questions with a demo. Show us. You're listening to or watching, perhaps, our live coverage of the Worldwide Developers Conference from Apple, uh, live in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. Alex Lindsay and myself, Tom Merritt, 
uh, bringing it to you as we find it on the live blogs and and any uh, any live uh, streams that we're able to find for as long as they exist. We had one for a little while. It was nice. It was nice. It was. Yeah. It was we knew fun. it would probably wouldn't last. But yeah. Animated widgets in the notification center. So you you've got some uh, automatic updating going on. Like for instance, ESPN has a notification center where scores are are going to scroll through in a little widgety uh, type interface. You can manage specific app alerts, so you can dismiss just your Facebook notifications or your text message uh, notification center. So I guess you get still get a pop up that tells you notification center has something new though, right? But it has a weather and a stock widget at the top of it. I see the Steeler score widget. That's Kevin Angel called, but but uh, Scott was busy doing his demo, so he missed it. All right, on to feature number two. He's going to show us ten, and it took that long to show us notifications. This may take a while, folks. Get get comfortable. Uh, the next one is called Newsstand. Are we getting a uh, magazine app store? Or is this just a, an organizational way of handling all of these subscriptions? It is has gotten a little out of hand. It looks like iBooks in the icon. Right. It's just with magazine icons. <laughs> Do you know how to use the iBooks the, the most is, is actually just uh, holding all the PDF, all my PDF manuals. <laughs> like, I, you know, it's a great way to organize them. Yeah, yeah. All set up and, I can see and, that. Uh, I use it more for that than anything else. So they're using National Geographic as, a, uh, as an example here. Worldwide Developers Conference announcements always move slowly. They do a lot of demo, and that's because they've got a, an audience full of developers. This isn't really meant to be a press announcement. They let the press in, obviously, to cover it. But this is meant to get the developers hyped, and then they sort of use it to, to tout their horns on other stuff. So it always takes a little longer than, a, uh, than you might be used to from a simple press conference where they're just announcing one particular device. Direct line to magazines and newspapers comes in newsstand. Do you think they trademarked newsstand? Like they tried trademarked app store? Yeah, exactly. We better start publishing a physical magazine, says this is my next. <laughs> so we can get into newsstand. Combines all newspapers and magazines. Uh, looks like iBooks. This looks actually pretty interesting. I, I think this makes sense. You're basically saying, look, we have, an, we have a bookstore, right. and now we have a subscription program for magazines and newspapers. We, we need a place to, to organize that. Yeah. We'll set it to be the cover of the new magazine for magazines. Ah, we have a little audio. That is newsstand. Background downloads. So if an issue comes out when you wake up and pick up your iPad, the newspaper is ready for you to read it offline. You know, I have to, I have to admit, I, I had my... I, I'm my favorite app on my on my iPad is Flip, Flipboard, and uh, I have to admit I, I I had a USA Today and Flipboard, and I used the USA Day for about ten minutes, and I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. This whole paper thing, it opened things up, moving them around. I was like, I'm, I'm going back to Flipboard. So number th number three feature is Twitter. So now, when you go to the settings app, which is built in on the iPhone or iPad. You can enter your username and password. So basically, you can enter your Twitter. Any app you download off the app store, it'll say, can I use your credentials? And you say, yes. The YP.com site. Uh, I don't know where, where were we were getting that, that audio from. Obviously, some people commenting on their, their audio stream as well. Um, but uh, they, you know, they're, they're in a, Scott Forstall on stage talking about Twitter being integrated into iOS 5. It's not just an app. Uh, the settings are there in the in in the normal settings place where you can add your account. So I imagine this is going to inform Twitter into other apps. Right. So this is like a single sign-on. So any other app that's using the Twitter interface, you simply don't you don't have to sit there and type in all your stuff every single time. You just have it in the OS, which that's very it's good for Twitter. Uh, you know that's a, that was a tweets from camera or gallery. You can tweet articles from Safari website. You can tweet videos from YouTube. And you can tweet about you can already or tweet locations from maps. So Twitch being integrated. We add an integration with Tom. Brilliant. Now you might have a lot of contacts that don't have photos. It's got but Twitter may have photos from those people. And so you can use Twitter to automatically update 
the photos and your contact list of your video at New Green for your friends. And that's Twitter integration. Right All right, there. so there we go, Twitter integration. I want to give credit to the folks that are giving us the audio stream, so just tell me what the URL is. WWDC TV. Okay. Oh, it's on it's on Justin. Yeah. Justin TV. Cool. All right. Our next one is apparently Safari. They're gonna upgrade the uh, the iOS Safari browser, which will therefore upgrade all of the apps that are built on the Safari browser, I'm guessing. Now somebody's saying CNN has a live stream too. It's delayed, okay. Yeah, we, we want to stay current and show Muppets. A simulated father. What, what, oh, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the Microsoft keynote by accident. They, they're showing Muppets over there in case you're interested. Microsoft's still doing their E3 announcement. Going through numbers on mobile Safari usage, iOS 64%, Android 27%. Scott Forstall says Safari is the best mobile web browser out there, Alex. Uh, it's the one I, I guess it's the one I use the most. Is that because you don't use any other platforms? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm buying an Android this week. Are you? What are you yeah. going to get? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really close to the Galaxy S2. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm looking for good, a good camera. So, um, we're working on a new show. Yeah. And so I need an Android and I put sure. it up, I tweeted it and that seems to be the, I think that's the conventional wisdom. As, yeah. For a good camera. I mean, Android. there's the Nexus S uh, 4G uh, yep. on Sprint is another one that, that people like, but it's on Sprint. I don't and care a lot of people don't I, like that. I'm not, so. I'm not that, you know, uh, you know, and, and, but that's the one I'm looking at right now. So, but I'm, but I'm buying an Android sometime this week. So, all right. Then so I'll have other platforms. Now they're talking about reader. Uh, it comes up when you're reading a story on a website, reformats the page to make it more readable. It does a lot of other things, by the way. Yeah. So a funny thing about about uh, website security, you know, the the you know there there's a lot of companies that you know, they want they want you to pay a subscription to get in. So they'll show you the page and then they put a black screen over top of it, and uh, it turns out a lot of times if you just hit reader, it just shows you the text for that for that page. <laughs> like it, it, you know, it's like the little back end to a lot of these things. So. Second one is reading list. Uh, Apple's own read it later. Essentially, you just pop something into reading list and you can save it to be read. The question is, is it saving that, that entire document so you can be offline? Or is it or, just or saving it just the saving, link? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the it. I imagine it's just saving the link. Like a, it's, it's just like a bookmarking system. I do think it's interesting that if you don't have time to finish on your iPad, you can finish on your iPhone. Tabbed browsing. So we finally get tabbed browsing in Safari. This is something that's we've had in other problem. browsers yeah. on in, in the App Store. But you ha you don't get it from the Safari. iOS has been this stupid thing where you pull back and then you go to page number three and she it seems pretty fast to, to switch between tabs. Do you like the metaphor here? I mean, it, it looks like yeah. Safari tabs. You have you have tabs up at the top. It's not doing some weird mobile version of tabs, yeah, which is no, what other apps great. have done. Well, that whole pulling back and going to another page, was yeah, bogus. That that is a big advantage on the iPad. I think it's nice on the iPhone, but a huge advantage on the iPad is not having to pull back and and yeah. and have e and have those pages reload half yeah. the time. Yeah. If if you're in a tab and you can just fast switch, all of a sudden one of my big objections to using the iPad for productivity goes away. Yeah, they're showing DP review. Plus, and now it's adding this to my reading list and again. I can go finish this on Mac. On you know, on Safari, on Mac, or any of my other iOS devices. Great. And I really like this, and I want to tweet about. Let me show you the Twitter integration. All up here. I tap tweet. Brings up the tweet sheet. We do completion. I hit. I have a friend uh, Gary Dunn. So I hit at G. Automatically fills in the name. Tap that and say my. You got to feel like though that I, with all with this reader. That some sites are going to do what they can to defeat it because yeah. it's just you turn it on, you hit it, and it is the what it's what the user wants, not necessarily what the publisher wants. Right, which is the uh, history of the internet encapsulated. Right. <laughs> Reading list syncs across browsers for iOS and OS X. So once you mark it, 
You can get to it from your iPhone. You can get to it from uh, your Safari browser on OS X. Number five is reminders, he just said. So a task list function. Place associated. Like, don't forget to log me on when I get home. Some have a time so they buy concert tickets Monday at 10 a.m. That's when we go on sale. Wouldn't it be great if you get rid of all these scraps of paper and store all this on your phone? But beyond that, if your phone actually reminded you to do things as opposed to just statically keeping a list of things. So instead of, instead of exactly just keeping a list, the reminders app does. it gives you alarms. The reminders app, you can store. Lists of things, multiple lists of things for a trip to San Francisco, a birthday party. It's going to be a lot of native apps. Are, they, are these going to be things you have to download when you first install uh, iOS 5? So I don't know, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of developers who write stuff like this that are going... Really cool. wah, wah. I can set the reminder to say, yes. remind me to call my wife. <laughs> remind me to call my wife. You can, of course, search through all your reminders, and reminders will sync with iCal on the Mac using CalDown, and even with Outlook on Windows <coughs> using Exchange. Wow, <laughs> syncs with Outlook. <laughs> or Lookout. <laughs> Next is camera. You Next, know, okay, we're upgrading camera. The iPhone 4 is widely regarded as having one of the best cameras on a mobile phone. This is number six of ten. It's also one of the most popular. In fact, if you look at cameras used to take photos and then post them to Flickr, now this is all cameras, not just uh, cameras on phones. You see where the iPhone 4 is. <laughs> it is already by far the most popular camera on a phone to take photos, and it very soon will be the most popular camera overall. Well, we want to make using the camera even better, and that's what we're doing. The first thing we're doing is making it way faster to get in. Uh, yay! Can I can I applaud here? It drives me crazy. Oh, how long it takes? Yeah. You, you if you want to like, grab something really okay, quick, I'm gonna go get a coffee and wait for it to come back on. What's happening? Your kid's doing something really cute. You want to capture it? You double click that home button. You get a new camera icon. When you tap on that <clears> camera icon. You're brought directly and immediately to the camera, and you're ready to take a photo. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's huge. What's cool about this is even if you have a passcode set, we'll take you right in to take a new photo. We'll protect it, and you can't see any previous photos you've taken or anything else on the phone without taking your passcode. So people who steal your phone can take pictures of themselves. It's <laughs> good. And you can even use the volume up button now. <laughs> That's big. They finally, they chink. They, you can use the volume button yep. to take a picture. So, so, yeah, if you didn't catch that, the button, volume up button, allows you to take a picture. Use the shutter button to turn your volume up. <laughs> so I'm going to press camera right now on my current iPhone 4. It's so on Apple. We've added optional grid lines. So you can use the rule of thirds. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight seconds. You can now pinch the zoom right within the camera. All right. And I like that instead of the double tap. If you hold your finger over part of the scene now, we'll set the auto exposure and auto focus lock. You can even move around and stick to that. That's useful. That's really useful. This is a really advanced feature, and we've brought it to the iPhone, and we've made it really easy for everyone to use. Now, next, once you've taken your great photos, you can now edit them right on your iPhone. So, uh, and your iPad. also, a yeah. lot of developers yeah. sad that this is going. Well, you know, red eye reduction. As a as so a developer for the Mac, and we, we make stuff for you know uh, for Final <laughs> Cut and so on and so forth. I always look at it like right next next version. Right. I don't know if I'm going to still be and in business. You know, in that area. Over the one click enhance that we uh, pioneered in <laughs> iPhoto on the Mac and brought that to iOS. So you can see when you apply one tap and enhance to the right, how the color tones look so much nicer, how it pulls detail out of shadow. It's really nice. 
for some great photo editing features and really nice camera enhancements. That was a big. That's a big upgrade. Especially given that it's just software. Oh yeah, it's not a new heart. Not a new. Just, it just makes what we have. Better. Next is mail. Now mail is one of the Here we go, most Alex. applications on both the iPhone, iPod, and iPod Touch, iPad and iPod Touch. And we're making it even better in iOS 5. We're adding rich text formatting. You can set things to bold. Uh, I don't iPhone. care. I don't want. That's just me. I'm a fuddy duddy. I don't care about that either. Yeah, that's all right. You can now drag the addresses between two. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Now, now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah. 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 We've added support for flagging. So you flag oh, that's nice. I, I use flagging on, on other apps. The next one has been an incredibly popular request. In addition to searching from, to, and subject, you can search the entire content of all your messages. Better search. I bet it won't make that much of a difference. On the mail server. So it's searching the server, not just what's on the phone. For the iPad, we added a really nice swipe to inbox gesture. So it makes it really nice to use this in portraits. You swipe it on, tap on something, swipe it on. And with every release of iOS or iOS, we continue to add more support for our enterprise customers. And one example of that in iOS 5 is we've added support for S-Mime. Now, I think we've done a really nice job of this. Now, if you have the certificate of someone else, you automatically get this lock icon right in the addressing field to, to show you this will be encrypted when sent to the other person. Yeah. Let me just go ahead if you and use S -Mine, demo you're these features now. All right. I really need a demo of this. That's all I'm saying. So first, I can show you well, that's what I mean. That, okay, I, I know he didn't it. demo it, but know, what but you I showed me just gave me the right gist of it. Yeah, so anywhere you are when your portrait is pulling on, you have to go punch up and find the right button for it. You can see we have flagging <laughs> here, so I can tap on that flag message. Oh, one other feature we've added is a built-in dictionary throughout the OS as a service now. So before, we had a dictionary in the iBooks app. But we now brought that to the entire OS so all apps from the App Store can use it. So here, if I just press down, let's see, on Leachies, I don't know what that is, let's say. Uh, Leachie? You I don't define, know what Leachie is? In addition to copy, tap define, there it is, built in dictionary. <laughs> if I say respond to this message, again, I can grab one of these addresses and now just drag it to BCC. Drag it to and rearrange it. Really nice and easy. There's one more feature I want to show you. And it's actually a system-wide feature having to do with the keyboard. When we released the original iPhone, we revolutionized the way people would type on multi-touch displays. And we keep on challenging ourselves to make that even better. Well, we have a new variant to the keyboard in iOS 5 for the iPad, which we think people who like to type with their thumbs while holding it are really going to like. Uh-oh. In the bottom right, you see the keyboard button and now have some grab handles. Grab so handles. This is their answer to Windows up. 8, huh? There you go. So they're saying, look, Windows 8 does the broken keyboard on a tablet. Ours follows your thumbs. The key is closer to your thumbs on the side. So you can, you can put it wherever you want. It's really nice. And it's persistent for every app in the system. It just stays where you put it. If you want to put it back down, just press and hold. They dock and merge, it goes back down to the bottom. So even a yeah, that, everyone was giving Microsoft props for that in their Windows 8 yeah. demo. And Apple's done them a, a half better by saying, see if you I can like actually it. position I, them. I, I have to see Number if I can eight. make it work. Well, you'd have to set it. And I only need it when I'm standing, right? So. Finally. Yeah. It's got a lot of excitement and for good reason. PC free. If you didn't see it, they, there's a scissors and a cord. So it's always it seemed insane that you had to keep on going back. But I think it's going to be connected to iCloud. It's one of the reasons I haven't bought an iPad for my mom. She doesn't have a computer. They see this. So what? Making fun of themselves. Yeah, we're living in a post PC world. In fact, especially with the iPad, we're ushering in the post PC world. We have a lot of customers coming to us and saying, I want to buy 
an iPad is my only device. Scott Forstall is uh, doing very well in his presentation. An I iPhone is my only I device. I take it back about his trip. Internet access. <laughs> where I live. Will be my iPhone. We know we're selling into a lot of places where the households just don't have computers. And they want to buy an iOS device as their only device, and that's exactly what we're going to support in iOS 5. Now, when you take your iPhone out of the box, instead of seeing this, you're going to see this. It says welcome, instead of having a picture of the earth and a cord. Activate your device right on the device, and you are ready to go. That easy. And of course, there's some other things we had to do to make this possible. iCloud, for instance. Software updates are now over the air. Software updates, OTA, finally caught up with Android there. Although Android users know that's not always a benefit. Sometimes it takes a long time. As you bet, I've been holding off on my on my updates on my iPhone because I don't want to give up the GPS. Delta updates. Delta updates? Uh, so the next thing so we did, small we, downloads, not huge. We looked at all of the apps in the iPhone. iPhone That'll help with that budget, speed. And yeah. asked ourselves, what are the reasons that people go back to a computer today? And let's add that functionality right to iOS. So for instance, you just have to go back to a computer to create calendars or delete calendars. You can now create and delete calendars right That's from good. iOS. I do that a lot. Not just calendar yeah. items, but right. right. whole calendars. Really yeah. significant editing functionality in there. So you can cross, rotate, one tap in hand. Red eye Although I constantly right create calendar items iOS on my phone that don't Even translate now, via mobile mail. I don't know why. Boxes, delete mail boxes, you, right from uh, if I create something on my iPhone 50% of the time, it doesn't show up on the iPad. iPad. Added that functionality. So now, if you want to cut the cord, you can. Either that or I was still sedated. And I made my dentist appointment. Next. <laughs> game center. iOS is the most popular gaming platform on the planet. There are more than 100,000 game and entertainment titles in the App Store. And so about nine months ago, we launched Game Center. And we did it to make it even easier for people to find players to play games against. And also, Make it easy for you to compare how you're doing against your friends. Which planet are they the well, most popular? Well, in just nine months, I, we have 50 million. I don't think I like Game Center. It makes me very upset because I'm Angry Birds. Like, because you look and see how other people are so much better than you. Like, I want to stay in the top 10,000. About eight years. I know, and that's sad enough and that you're only in the top 10,000. I. I, I I thought I had this dream that I would be, because I have three stars on every level of Angry Birds, and I'm still only in the top 10,000. I was like, Fruit Ninja and Solitaire make me feel the same way. We're adding photos. You can see photos of your friends, change your photos. Adding photos. You can compare yourself against your friends using achievement points for your game. You can see friends of friends as well. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You also will get recommended friends that might be great people to play some of the games that you like. We've also added game recommendations. So there might be some really great games out there, maybe they're new, that you don't know about. And we'll help I like that. Any, anything that helps me discover stuff now that the App Store is so play, huge. Yeah. You can purchase and download it directly from Game Center. Now, this is great both for our customers and for our developers. That's an easy Another thing we've done for our developers is we've added support for turn-based games right in the OS. <laughs> What I want to see in Game Center is ma multiplayer marathon. But the developer had to do all the work for that. And now that's supported right out of the box. Turn based games supported out of the box implies a big data center that can help with that. Next. Number 10. Last one. Is iMessage. Why, why is now, it called iMessage? I believe we have the best messaging client out there on the iPhone. It works tremendously well to... It's called messages right messages now. Why do they change it? Photos and videos. And our customers, we love it. Our iPhone customers. But what about our iPad customers? Ah. And our iPod touch customers? They've been asking us for a messaging solution. And so in iOS 5, we're launching a new messaging service between all iOS 5 customers. Yeah. 
So FaceTime for text. Call it iMessage. So iMessage supports the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch. It does everything you've come to expect Carriers for a messaging like app this. Yeah, yeah. on the iPhone. So you can send text messages, photos, videos, and contacts to group messaging. I'm tired of paying $1.19 for every photo and text message. And that is some really nice new features. Things like delivery or receipt. So you can see this is delivered to the other person's device. That's good for uh, text messaging the collection you office. Been read. <laughs> this is one of my favorite typing indications. You can tell now if someone starts typing and they're responding to you, you know you're about to get that message. I don't like read receipts. Then they know. All your devices. So if you start a conversation on your iPad and later pick up your iPhone, you can pick up right where you left off with all the context of that conversation to date. Gee, how are they ha managing all of this syncing across devices, yeah, Alex? Exactly. All right, you would need a large data center for that. And Wi-Fi, and everything is sent encrypted over the wire, over the over the air. And we're proud to I'm announce our partner in this room. To do so, I also like to invite up Jaws, Vice President of Product Marketing, to help me. Ah, uh, so uh, Scott finally doesn't have to do his own demo. Jaws Weak is going to join him. I'm going to play a game, though. Uh, playing a game? Okay. Try it out at the bottom. Okay. Right. Product marketing. Uh, <laughs> he's on the, the iPhone on the left. I'm on my iPad on the right-hand side. i go ahead and launch messages here. So here I have a conversation going with Joe. Normally we don't stand next to each other when we have these conversations. By the way, those of you, uh, I was joking Let's about Rim. Them. Rim is not a partner. It's just that the messaging uh, service is very similar to Black Rim. <laughs> When I send this to him, you'll notice as he plays the game, it comes in right at the top, and he can keep on playing the game, so it's not interrupting him as he does his lovely job playing the game. I'm on a roll, don't bother me. <laughs> but at any time, he can get right back to that message. Uh oh. <laughs> I think this might be a good time. <laughs> All right, so that, that's a good uh, just demonstration of how that notifications will work in practice. I like, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So the notification shows up just at the top, and then if you click it, it'll bring down the notification center. He's currently responding. Well, check me some other messages while he's doing so. So then when he sends the message, you see where it sends? He gets a little delivered. And he's sending the message from an iPhone to an iPad. Right to my device. And when I tap on his message, it sends a read receipt saying, read, 11.15 a.m., he knows I've read it. So read receipt is great. It would be great if they added support with, for this in Lion. To so be able to message people. That is this kind of weird disconnection. All right, maybe we can have a picnic by the bridge. Uh, <laughs> uh, send a little picture again. You can tell from the dot on his side that I'm composing it right now. Send it off. And again, we go over Wi Fi as well as 3G. Send it over. What's the ID nice that you're sending? High to? quality in the entire transmission. Is it an email address? Over the air. And again, I'm on. My iPad, so it supports iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone. Thanks, John. So I imagine you have to register your email addresses. Right. Hey, Scott Forstall. And we're actually building this on the push notification system we've built, so we know how to scale this. We have incredible features here when are we gonna get in it? iOS 5. The notification system, which is just really nice. Newsday makes it even better to read your newspapers and magazines, right, on your iPad or iPhone. Great Twitter integration, a new Reminders app. You can be PC-free if you want. And the new iMessage application. And these are just 10 of the more than 200 new user features. There's really something for everyone in iOS 5. And there's other things like AirPlay mirroring. You can now mirror your entire iPad 2 right to your television wirelessly. Wirelessly. Now, how does your television get it? I Apple TV, I guess? Yeah, my. Wi-Fi takes the iPad. Oh, sorry, that's, that's a big feature. That... 
<laughs> he's just kind of washed over. That's actually much more interesting than a lot of the other people they showed. Or you can go back and plug into your computer to sync, and now when you are charging at night, let's say, your iOS device will automatically find iTunes over Wi-Fi and <laughs> sync with it. And before it syncs, it'll back itself up, so you automatically get backed up every single day. Think of the podcasting benefits. Yes. No more plug. No more plugging in to get the latest no, Economist podcast in the morning. So you can just click right between your apps. Really nice. Well, not only is there something for every one of our customers, there's something for every one of our developers. <laughs> Some great new development tools, including significant enhancements to Xcode, instruments, and the simulator. Even core image. We brought over the powerful core image. complex image operations like red eye reduction, face detection, right from within their app. So you're asking yourself, when are you getting it? And the answer is, we're giving a developer seat to you today. And there's already a paste bin link out there that allegedly has iOS 5. If you learn about all the new APIs and all the sessions this week, you can go and use those APIs immediately using your seed. And iOS 5 will ship to all of our customers this fall. Uh, that's rather iOS vague. iOS 5 will support a lot of applause there. that we supported with our last software update. So that's the iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4, all the iPads, iPad and iPad 2, and the third and fourth generation iPod Touch. And that is iOS 5. So this fall means we haven't decided when the iPhone's coming out. Right. I, I We're thinking I about it. That. Yeah. So, we, so we've covered Lion, we've covered iOS, so yep. now one more thing. Now Here comes the, the iCloud. The product we want to tell you about today, to tell you about the third, I'd like to turn it back over to Steve. Steve Jobs, we act? Oh no, Steve Jobs. Okay. <laughs> you were right, you called it. Steve Jobs coming out for iCloud. Do you like everything so far? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll try not to blow it. <laughs> so, I get to talk about iCloud. We've been working on this for some time now, and we're really excited about it. Um, about 10 years ago, we had one of our most important insights, and that was that the PC was going to become the digital hub for your digital life. What did that mean? Well, it meant that that's where you were going to put your digital photos. Where else were you going to put them? Your digital video off your digital camcorder. And of course, your music, right? You were going to acquire it in the device or potentially on your Mac. Uh, and you were going to basically sync it to the Mac and everything was going to work fine. Now, we know where this is and going. It's post-PC era for the better part of 10 years. But it's broken down in the last few years. I think it that's really, a little harsh. Why? It really has, though. I'm well, because the devices have changed. Have, everything's in the wrong computer. They yeah. now all have music. They now all have photos. They now all have video. And so if I acquire a song, I buy it right on my iPhone, I want to get that to my other devices. Or I pick up my iPad and it doesn't have that song on it. So I have to sync my iPhone to my Mac. Then I have to sync my other devices to the Mac to but get that Scott song. Just but Scott said then they've deposited some photos on the Mac, Mac. So I have to sync the iPhone again with the Mac to get those photos. And keeping these devices in sync is driving us crazy. Because <laughs> 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 yes. it's driving yes. everyone crazy, yeah. We are ready for you to help. solution for this problem. And we think the solution is our next big insight, which is we're going to demote the PC and the Mac to just be a device, just like an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod Touch. And we're going to move the digital hub, the center of your digital life, into the cloud. Because all these new devices have communications built into them. They can all talk to the cloud whenever they want. And so now, 
If I hit something on my iPhone, it's sent up to the cloud immediately. Let's say I take some pictures with it. Those pictures are in the cloud, and they are now pushed down to my devices completely automatically. And now everything's in sync with me not even having to think about it. I don't even have to take the devices out of my pocket. I don't have to be near my Mac or PC. Now, some people think the cloud is just a hard disk in the sky. Mm, like right? iDrive? <laughs> you take a bunch of stuff and you put it in your Dropbox or your iDisk or whatever, and it transfers it up to the cloud and stores it, and then you drag whatever you want back out on your other devices. We think it's way more than that. And we call it iCloud. Now, iCloud stores your content in the cloud and wirelessly pushes it to all your devices. So it automatically uploads it, so like stores it, and automatically pushes it to all your other devices. But also, it's completely integrated with your apps. And so everything happens automatically, and there's nothing new to learn. It just all works. <laughs> Now, this, this is not revolutionary. I mean, Android's been doing this. Windows Phone 7 has a version of this. How is Apple going to make this different and work Why better? Why should I believe them? They're the ones that brought me mobile games. Ooh, that's unusual. Let me just say that. But we learned a lot. Now, the three core apps in mobile me were contacts, calendar, and mail. Three things we'd obviously like kept up to date. We've thrown them away. We've re-architected and rewritten them from the ground up to be iCloud apps. And we put them on all of our devices. So, as an example, in contacts, when I make a new contact on my iPhone, it's automatically brought up to the cloud where it's stored on the cloud. Right? The truth is on the cloud. And then it's automatically pushed down to my other devices. So Isn't that what mobile me is supposed to do? It's that easy. It was. I just update a contact on my iPhone and don't even think about it. And that contact is updated on all my other devices. And if I change it on any device, it's updated on all devices, wirelessly, automatically, without me doing a thing. So that's contacts. Here's calendars. The wireless thing is new because it wasn't, you have to plug I everything in, that was one of the big things. Well, no, I get, I get wireless uh, things so you change your addresses for, for calendar. Push to my other devices. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Pretty cool. We've also added calendar sharing. So as an example, if I'm sharing a few calendars with my wife, school and soccer calendars, let's say. Right? And I add a new calendar for a teacher-parent conference. On my phone, it's again automatically pushed up to the cloud and automatically pushed to my wife's iPhone. If she adds <laughs> an appointment for a soccer game, again, it goes up to the cloud and back to my iPhone. So G -Cal. It's that simple. And so calendars has, it stores your calendars in the cloud, changes on any device or push to all your devices, and we have shared calendars. And we think you're going to love the new calendars. It just works. And then we have mail. Mail was in the best shape of all. Didn't we already go over it? It's even better now. We give you a mail account it was before the cloud. at me.com. Your new messages, again, are pushed to all your devices. And like we're used to, your inbox and folders are all kept up to date on all the devices. So that's mail. <laughs> and no ads. <laughs> no ads is the laugh line. Of big, 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 let's dig into our favorite. We build products that we want for ourselves too, and we just don't want ads. <laughs> we can't get there. So these are the three apps that form the core of Mobile Me. We used to sell them for a subscription price of $99 annually. As of today, this product ceases to exist. And 
I want a refund. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of curious. So for all of us who have been paying bucks to mobile me, where, where did my money uh, Just go? for the remainder. That's, that's fine. They change right. it. But we didn't stop there. We've got three more apps that we brought into the iCloud universe. The first is, of course, the App Store. This is why they need a data center. In the App Store, you bought a lot of apps so far, and you can buy them, of course, directly on your devices. Maybe the app you want isn't on the device you've got with you. So for all your purchase history now, you can see it on all your devices. That's nice. I kind of already have the ability to do that because it'll show you it's install right. instead of buy, but I've always wanted to access the list. Yeah. Just download from the cloud, and if you want that app on that device, you just push that button, and that app is automatically sent to that device. Right? And there's no extra charge. No extra charge. There never has been. That's now, really no, there hasn't been, but, but for your purchase history, being able to buy something on my, on my iPhone and know it's going to work on my iPad. Well, for devices when you buy them in the future, you want to buy Yelp, let's say, the cloud downloads it to all your devices. Again, at no extra charge. No, can I choose not to? Right. Because I don't want a bunch of iPhone apps on my iPad necessarily. That's what doing with the App Store. iBooks. Same How much thing. would you pay? Don't answer, because you, you also get... purchase history of all the books you bought on any device. You want to get it on your iPhone, say? And again, all of this stuff has happened, but it's always been something you've had to sync you with your that, that single computer that you had that was the, the home computer that, you know, so you always had to keep on resyncing everything with this, and now you don't need to. That's the distinction here. It's not that you couldn't get it on all these applications. It was that... One device, let's say you're reading it on your iPad, and you've just got to run, you get to a page, you bookmark that page. Now with WhisperSync. Send up to the cloud and store, and again, push to all your other devices, so maybe you can read another, the rest of the chapter as an example on the train to work. It all changes. Thanks, Jeff Bezos. Well, again, the, the advantage that Apple has by having this kind of built-in community is they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can just copy everybody else's stuff and say, but now it works inside of your sandbox. wirelessly back up your devices daily to your PC or your Mac, but let's do it to the cloud as well for those people that want to be completely PC-free. So we've added wireless backup to the cloud. Nice. That's cool. And uh, basically... How big is it? Once daily... We're going to back up a lot of your important content to the cloud. Not all of it. If you ever get a new phone, have to replace a phone, you literally type in your Apple ID and password, and everything will be loaded onto that phone automatically. <laughs> so we automatically do daily backups to iCloud over Wi-Fi. We back up your purchased music, apps, and books. Music. We back up your camera roll with your photos and videos. Purchased music. We back up your device settings, and we back up your app. <laughs> purchased <laughs> music. Mm -hmm. So that is backup, and those are three other apps that come with iCloud. Well, we couldn't stop there. <laughs> How much would you pay for that iCloud? Don't answer. So, we have a final three apps that are amazing. Well, the iPod's going to be one of them. part of iCloud, I think. And uh, I'd love to tell you about them. <laughs> but I'm not going to. I would First love to tell you about them. You have to wait until the fall. It's documents in the cloud. All right, that makes sense. And I, I bet we were going to get this. If I'm on my iPad, and I create a pages document, right? I create a pages document, and it automatically <coughs> uploads it and stores it in the cloud. And I close that document. I just want to be able to use Google, Google Docs in Safari. <laughs> and it then pushes it to all the devices that I have pages on. So I can get the document between my devices. It is a big pain in the neck right now to do this. And we have put that into pages, numbers, and keynote. As a matter of fact, the versions we just released last week 
have this in there. No. <laughs> and to demonstrate what this is like with iWork, I'd love to invite Roger Rosner, who's our VP of iWork up, to give us a quick demo. Purchased music. So we're going to hear more about that because I bet one of these other three apps is going to be the iPod. Right, the iPod app. Or some kind of music iWork app. And iCloud will work together. Let's say you're working on a keynote presentation on your iPad. Let's say. Making a beautiful presentation with all those awesome... And it's driving you crazy because it's very hard to set up all the animations on your right. iPad. You're away from home. You didn't bring your iPad with you. Or you decided that you wanted to send it back to the computer so you could finish all the work that you couldn't get done on your well, iPad. Last week we shipped really came with it. for iPhone. It really came in a bad news there. For anybody bad who wants uh, an iWork app for your iPad, you can download that app for your iPhone at no additional charge. So let's fire up Keynote on this phone. This is the first time we've run it here, so it's going to say hi. Then it's going to say, do you want to use iCloud? We say yes. And immediately, it sees all your Keynote presentations that you've been working on in the cloud and starts to download them in the background to your iPhone. So I'll open this one we were just looking at. And as you can see, it's all there. I didn't even remember what slide we were looking at. And if I want to, I can just hit play. Play it right on my iPhone. And I put exactly zero effort into getting that file over here. Actually, I wonder if they'll rename Pretty the app neat. from iPod to Music and Videos. Because you know, we have the Videos right. app on the iPod. Of course, all the iWork apps use iCloud, so let's take a look at pages. And you know, imagine you're out and you, uh, you're inspired to make some changes to a document you've been working on. So I'm going to move this graphic over here. Maybe I just took a photograph that I think would be so great. So what happens if multiple people page, log into the same thing the at the same time <coughs> from different devices? Graphic, use alignment guides to place it. And I'm done. And I, I stick the phone in my pocket and I forget about it. And uh, in the background, iCloud is grabbing all those changes and then immediately pushing them back down to my iPad. We're getting this stream from home, one more thing .nl. The iPad, I want to thank them uh, for sneaking somebody in there who's able to stream this out. If you want to get it without our commentary. Risking life and limb. And there are all my edits. Absolutely no effort on my part. And that is how iWork works with iCloud. I think you're going to like it. It just works. I think you're going to like it automatically. Thanks, Roger. And documents in the cloud really complete our iOS document storage story, too. In other words, a lot of us have been working for 10 years to get rid of the file system. So the user didn't have to worry about it. When you try to teach I like the file system. Teach somebody I how to give use the file system. Easiest of all computers to use. Everything's going along fine until you hit the file system and then the difficulty <laughs> is it staggered. really so hard. <coughs> you know I will so say we it made is it for on the iOS device. Less techie folks. So yeah, I've been living with it for it. Yeah, all my life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't have any. I'm just excited I don't have to put an 8.5 inch floppy in. I don't have to type the but actual the path. We yeah, exactly. I have a graphical yeah. interface. Was how do we move those documents around to different devices? And documents in the cloud solved that problem for us. <coughs> Apps can store documents in iCloud. <coughs> iCloud pushes those documents to a user's devices automatically. The documents update on all devices when changed on any device. This is going to be weird for shared computers because these and are all still tied to single ID. So families are going to have interesting <laughs> gymnastics. For iCloud, the big, the big applause is iCloud um, APIs, so storage APIs, so people can. Into iCloud storage. And again, you can have complex documents, apps like Pages, or we have another storage facility for key value data. So as an example, if you've got an app to extract stock, just update the key value pairs, and we'll store that in the cloud as well. So in North Carolina. Documents, key value data, works across all iOS devices, and Mac and PCs too.
What is this story on the PC? It's a Mac and PC story. It's going to be pretty big. Yep. And that is documents in the cloud. You could have an app on Windows that would uh, sync with this? It's maybe my favorite one. Mail syncs with uh, Outlook, for instance. And it's called Photos. Okay, so we're not getting too and it's media. And bring the cloud to Photos. This is his favorite? How many times he loves photos. have That's we true. taken photos Same on our days. iPhone, maybe of our kids in the afternoon, and wanted, when we got home, to share them on an iPad and have to go through the process of moving them over? Wouldn't it be great if by the time I got home they were already there on the iPad? Well, that's what PhotoStream is going to do for us across all of our devices. So again, I take photos on any device, puts it in the camera roll, and that will be automatically uploaded to the cloud where it's stored and automatically downloaded to all my other devices, including in this case a Mac. And so I've got my photos on my iPad. And I'm assuming with all of these, this is over Wi-Fi only, because otherwise, if we thought the AT&T system was, now, wasn't going to work addition, before... I can import photos. Right into iPhoto as an example on the map. It'll upload those to the cloud and do exactly the same thing with them by pushing them down to all my other devices. So Although there's a storage I issue there, because I have a lot of photos on my map. Right. And... We built this right into the apps. I, I hope you've seen that as we've gone through this. We built this right into the app, so there's nothing new to learn. So, PhotoStream on the iPad's photo app, we built it right in, right next to albums. My question is whether it's only doing it temporarily. It's not really storing it in the cloud, it's simply moving it to everything. It's, yeah. it's moving all the files, it's not, it's not actually keeping it. It's right there in your photos app. That makes sense. Because it's, it's separate right from there. albums, albums are the local store. It's just right there with all your other albums. There you go, photo stream. But what you want from here is to be able to have a bunch of people be able to right take pictures and have it stream to everybody. And so it's right there on the side, your photo stream. And on a PC, they don't have a photos app. So we use the pictures folder, right? In addition to that, we even built it in to Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah. Apple TV. No, that'll work. Apple TV talks directly over the internet, directly to, to the photo stream servers. Doesn't even go through your PC. Good for screensavers. Talks directly to the photo stream servers, so you can watch the photos right Good on your show. That's nice. So. So can you take a... One of the problems we faced was that we'll, photos are large and will use up all the memory on your devices. They're also large, they'll consume vast amounts of storage in our server farms. So we have came up with a great scheme. We're going to store photos on your devices. We're going to store the last thousand photos. Right? We'll store the last thousand. And any photos you want to keep permanently, just move them into an album and they'll stay forever. But they'll be parading by you, the last thousand photographs. On your Mac or PC, because we have more storage, we'll store all of them. You can get rid of them by just deleting them. But we'll store all of them. And on the server, we'll store them for 30 days, which is more than enough time for all your devices to connect and automatically download those photos. So we think we've got a great system here it's going to move our photos around among all of our devices, even Apple TV. But you do have to remember to save something. So that when I take a photo anywhere, <laughs> I can view it on all my other devices. I can't see people getting, really like, forgetting to move them in albums. I guess if you take it on an iPhone or an iPad, it's stored in an album on it. Right. So now we're going to get a demo of how PhotoStream works. Now, if this all stays free, I will have to say they've, they've really flipped the whole mobile me thing from being not particularly useful for money but to pretty useful for nothing. And we're going to go to our my iPhone. To make it up in sales? And I know. Is that what they're make it, up in, make it up in volume? Volume. <laughs> <laughs> sales of devices. It's looking good. I love the headlights. 
And now these photos are on my iPhone. But let's go look at my iPhone. <coughs> So when you take a photo on an iPhone, it's saved locally. You're not in danger of losing your no. photos unless you delete them now from where you the took them. That's right my assumption. The photos app. So right next to albums is photo stream, and there is the picture I just took. I didn't have to learn anything new at all. And if I want to save them permanently on my iPad. One of the interesting things here is you can imagine like at an event, giving four or five people the same login and then having an Apple TV with a screen or a big projector and having all those people just taking tons of photos and having those, those images just constantly changing. Yeah. Be kind of a cool event coverage. And I've seen that kind of thing done before. This is an easy way to do it. Yeah. yeah. And there are the photos I just took. Exactly the way I expected them to. Another, uh, another big thank you to Slingbox for helping to bring you this live coverage of WWDC, Apple's keynote announcement. Uh, you can check them out. They'll be able to stream your TV to your iPad. All you got to do is buy Slingbox, hook it up to your internet, hook it up to your TV. Check it out at Best Buy or at Amazon. Or go to slingbox.com for more information. We thank them for their support. So, photos you take or import, upload to iCloud, iCloud pushes them to all your devices, works over Wi-Fi, works iCloud over stores Wi-Fi. each photo for 30 days, which is plenty enough time for all the devices. So, photo stream is not working over 3G. Yeah. Devices store the last You just imagine all those, yeah, 3G cell towers just melting. Forever. And Macs and PCs store all photos. We're really, really pleased with Photo Stream. We think you're going to like it a lot. Last, but not least, yeah. I'm going to be very interested to see what they're implementing here. You know, it's the same old story, right? About I buy something on my iPhone. Right? Well, and, and it's not on my other devices. I grab my iPod and I go to listen to that song I bought yesterday on my iPhone. It ain't there. It's easy to start this from scratch. Well, the first thing it's what you do with the back catalog. Right. It's for the song you've already bought. You've added a purchase button. It shows you your entire purchase history of all the iTunes songs you bought on any device. You can look at it by all songs or recent songs, or you can look at it by artists. So I'm going to pick Bob Dylan here, and I can download any of these albums that I bought on iTunes to this device just by pushing that cloud download button. Or I can go in to one of them and just download whatever songs I want on this device. So anything I bought, I can now download to any of my devices at no additional charge. No extra charge. charge. Very nice. <laughs> Stuff you've already bought. But I mean, if, if you resync your, if you sync any of your stuff, again, this is over the cloud, over something you could do wired. Yeah, this is the same as the App Store. This in the music industry. No, no charge for multiple downloads to different devices. And for the future, I flip one switch to on, and now any song I buy on any device, again, will automatically be downloaded to all my devices. Love that. So when I want to buy a song, in this case an Adele song, it will push it to all of my devices. So to give us a demo of that, again, it's fine. I mean, I, I'm afraid I, I ripped a thousand CDs a, you know, a while ago, you know, and so my whole thing is, is it's just, my purchase, that Thanks, actually, so, purchase songs is such a small percentage of my library. So I'm on my iPhone, and I want to listen to a song I previously purchased on iTunes, but it's not in the music library on this device. Well, now they're I just ignoring, the iTunes music did you purchase it from Amazon? Did you rip it from a CD? They're just saying right that, the nope, that's not the, part of the point. Which could theoretically bring them I back into the antitrust interest. You know, mean, mm -hmm. you know, at, that now that they are the largest store. It's a big lockout. I mean, now it's I'm a huge lockout towards Amazon and everyone else. Right. Yeah. 
Antitrust versus copyright issues is what's at play here. A Apple would would and be fine is, sinking all of your entire library between the devices. Yeah. If the music industry would be on board for it, but they won't. They would like you to pay again, even though you already paid for it once. It's downloading at no additional cost. Let's go ahead and play it. Just finishing downloading. Now, earlier, did they not say iTunes was Wi-Fi syncing? So it's not cloud storage, but it might sync. Now, that's great, but iTunes in the cloud is even better. Let's see what happens when I purchase a new song. And if we can bring up my iPad, I'm going to go ahead and launch our new music player in iOS 5. And on my iPhone, I'm going to go back to the iTunes store. I want to buy a new song. And I want to look at uh, Bruno Mars' new album. I know he has a hit song. I think it's called uh, Lazy, Lazy Song. That's it. We can preview it. They're essentially giving us something that we should have had already, which is, you know, instead of making me move this file myself, we'll move it forward. Notice on my iPad, I don't have any Bruno Mars songs at all. And again, you could do this when you're plugging your, your individual devices into your computer. This is all just, this is all making it wild. it's now downloading to my iPhone, and in addition, there's the Bruno Mars song. Good question of whether iCloud will have to wait till fall as well. Right. Or whether you'll be able to get so this right away. One of my devices, it automatically downloads to all of my devices without having to sync or do any work at all. I think it would have to. That's iTunes in the cloud. One more thing. Thank One you more thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, music purchased from iTunes, high quality, 256 kilobits AAC. And you can have up to 10 devices downloading your music to all of them every time you buy it on any device. 10. That's nice. That's an expansion from five, I believe. Yeah. Cloud. So these nine apps constitute iCloud. And they are all free. That's quite a thing. Because we want you to buy our stuff. Yeah. Every user to take advantage of these. And we know if we make them free, that they'll, they will. And uh, we want people to see what these devices can really do and what the software can really do. So we're making it free, and we're very excited about it. So that's iCloud. It stores your content and wirelessly pushes it to all your devices. Some of your content. And it's integrated with your apps. Most of your content. So everything happens automatically. So a competitor that doesn't own the apps or doesn't have great developers to integrate with their apps, they can never do this. They can never make it so it just works. Well, except they already have. Done Our it. stream doesn't just work. Apparently the stream doesn't just work anymore. We were doing so well. Yeah, it got us through the uh, through most of it. I know. Now. You know what's going to happen, though. We're going to get the one more thing while we don't have a stream. Yeah, I, right. I just We've got live blogs. We can continue to... Uh, yes. To bring that to you, we'll, we'll see if they get uh, if the folks at uh, One More Thing NL get their stream back up too. Oh, of free check it out. For mail, documents, and backup, and that's even more than it sounds like, because we're not. <laughs> we're not getting a lifetime special. Uh, five gigabytes of free storage for mail, calendar, and contacts iCloud can be disabled, but it's on by default. To get it, you type in your Apple ID and password in iOS 5 is what they wrote on Mac Rumors Live. So I don't know if that means you have to wait for iOS 5 to take advantage of iCloud. Well, the developer beta is going out today. developer beta today. And also today, we're going to make something available to end users, which is the iTunes in the cloud portion, and it runs on iOS 4.3. It'll run on all the supported platforms when we ship it this fall, but today we're going to put it out for 4.3 as a beta, and everyone can get their hands on it and run it on their existing, uh, existing iPhone 4s. So we think this is going to be really exciting. And of course, we ship iCloud 
concurrent with shipping iOS 5 this fall. So that is iCloud. So you get the iTunes part right away. Yeah. But not the mail calendar. Not all the contacts. other. Yeah, not all the other stuff that I actually really want. I still have to limp along with mobile me. We're still a... working on those things. Well, there's one more thing. <laughs> iTunes in the cloud. As you recall, iTunes in the cloud is just for the music that you purchased from the iTunes store. Mm -hmm. Now at 14 billion songs, 15 billion, excuse me, that's a lot of songs out there that you purchased from iTunes music store. But you may have some <coughs> that you ripped yourself. And Legally. there's three ways you can deal with that. From a CD. One, you can sync your new devices over Wi-Fi or cable, cable, and you only have to sync them once just to get that music on them, and then you can rely on iCloud to take care of getting all your new purchases off iTunes onto that device. Or, if it's just a few songs you love, you don't want to leave behind, you can buy those songs that you'll miss on iTunes. And we're going to offer a third way, which is called iTunes Match. What is iTunes Match? Well, iTunes Match uses the fact that we've got 18 million songs now in the iTunes Music Store. And the chances are awfully good that we've got the songs in our store that you've ripped. And so we wrote software to scan those CDs, the, 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 the non-iTunes music, and match it up with those songs we have in the store. Right? And so we can give that music the same benefits as music purchased from iTunes. And it takes just minutes, not weeks. If you have to upload your whole library and send lock in the sky, that not really takes weeks. <laughs> this takes minutes because we're scanning and matching your library, so we don't need to upload that that large part of your library. And the few songs that remain, well we'll upload them. So why would I buy the song again then? Yeah, I'm, 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 the no, second I, I think it doesn't I make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. iTunes Match will upgrade those songs. Wow! How did you get the industry to agree to that? I have no idea. One hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, exactly. That's what that prepayment is for. And iTunes Match. Just $24.99 a year. That's how he got it. And that's how he was able to afford that $150 million. You have a bunch of music that you didn't buy from iTunes, you can get all the benefits of the cloud service and more in terms of upgrading your music for $24.99 a year. Now, if you look and compare that to some competitors, let's just look at Apple and Amazon. And, and if you stop paying, do you lose access? <laughs> yeah, that's. Because, again, the library in the cloud, we scan and match. The other guy, you've got to upload your whole music library. Again, it's going to take weeks. Music apps on your Mac and PC, well, you're stuck with a web app instead of iTunes. Upgrade to 256 kilobits per second. The other guys aren't upgrading you at all. The annual price for 5,000 songs were $24.99. Amazon charges you $50 for the storage, and Google hasn't announced their pricing yet. Even at 20,000 songs, we charge one flat price. Amazon's up to $200 for the storage, and Google hasn't announced their pricing yet. Because what they're doing is they're not storing your individual songs. Right. They are converting them so they're not actually, it's not extra storage for them. They're just, they just, they just have pointers that are pointing to your... They bought a lot of their music on iTunes, but for those that do, it's uh, an industry-leading offering, let's put it that way. We'll downgrade so your FLAC files for free. And it goes along with free iTunes in the cloud. And that's Nobody has speakers that are able to take advantage of FLAC files anymore. That's the problem. If you don't think we're serious about this, I think you're <laughs> wrong. Um, this is our third data center 
that we just completed. It's in Maiden, North Carolina. This is what it looks like. It's rather large. Um, it's as eco-friendly as you can make a data center with modern technology. And we're pretty proud of it. Um, just to give you a feel for its size, see those two little dots on the roof? Those are two people right there. <laughs> So it's a pretty large place, and it's uh, full of stuff, <laughs> expensive stuff. And uh, we are ready, we think, for, uh, for our customers to start using iCloud, and we can't wait to get it in their hands. So iCloud is the third thing we want to talk about today. I hope you like all the the three things that we've unveiled this morning. And again, we've got a great week planned for you uh, with uh, 5,200 attendees, over 120 sessions, over 100 hands-on labs, and over 1,000 Apple engineers here all week. So please ask us for any help you need. That's why we're here. Is Adele coming on stage? So go at it. Have a great week. And thank you very much. And that's it. So it was, you know, it was good. A lot of what we expected in slightly different ways. I think a lot yeah. of us thought the time capsule was going to get served somehow. It was going to somehow serve up your data. Uh, it doesn't appear to be that way. It also doesn't appear to be doing general backup of everything. It's documents. Now, the interesting thing is this is WWDC. So the, you, you, you now have SD, you know, you, you have uh, APIs and, you know, to integrate a lot of these features into the applications, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, and we are not getting uh, mobile me for free. Just just keep that in mind. With mobile me, you were paying to get several gig, you know, twenty gigabytes of storage, for instance. Right. That goes away. You're now for free getting contacts, calendar, and mail storage, uh, as well as wireless backup. Well, and I'm kind of curious what, what he says. Up to five gone. I, I don't. I don't know what happens to my mobile me. I'm not totally clear what happens to my mobile me subscription. I, th I think your mobile bee subscription will expire at some point, and then, then you're done. What, what happens to that 20 gigabytes? I guess that goes into the wireless backup, but the wireless backup is only of iPhone stuff. Well, that's the whole thing, is, is I have a lot of stuff up there. I have blog information and all kinds yeah. of other things. That's the thing that I'm not, total, I'm not totally sure where that goes. They're, they seem to be pushing that somewhere else. Of course, none of this takes effect until fall, so there's right. some time for them to, to come up with new time capsules and, and as, as maybe that's the solution for well, you. And I'm very curious about this whole, like, uh, you know, I think that there's going to be a lot of people watching. Like, it's, it's kind of the, uh, when it comes to um, your... Uh, pirated library, you know, or, or people's pirated library. I think it's going to be a little bit of the wildebeest going to the waterhole where they're going to watch a couple of people do it and just see, like, because it just seems scary if, if someone has downloaded a bunch of stuff from Napster or LimeWire or whatever, and then they're going to, theoretically, this is, we're going to pay 25 bucks a month to legalize all that content. I guess the argument that Apple's made is that you're getting 25 bucks a month from someone who wasn't giving you money before. Exactly. You, you want, you, you've <laughs> you know? always wanted to figure out how to monetize that stuff that people may have stolen or right. ripped off their CDs. You're not going to get it all back. Instead but you of getting anyway. legislation, do this. Right. Yeah. Andy Anatko uh, is has been following this as well during the uh, the entire keynote. Hey, Andy. Hello. My fingers are cramped because according to according to, uh, according to uh, Scrivener, I've just typed. 10,680 words worth of notes following. <laughs> Thank you very much for your live stream, by the way. <laughs> that gave me more stuff to type. But uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. I mean, th th but, the, the real, but the really cool thing about, uh, about uh, iTunes Match, doesn't it, doesn't it seem to you like the, like the, 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 the blank CD and the blank cassette text that uh, yeah. the music industry used to get like a certain amount of money for every single blank CD? So right. it seems like we'll say you can Small pirate text. all you want so long as you give us 25 bucks a year for the privilege of pirating music. Right, and it is 25 bucks a year. I said month. Right, right, 25 bucks a, a year. That was we, a Freudian slip. You don't slip. know what happens to your music at the end. It seems like oh, since because, you're able well, to download it, you get to keep it, right? right. Well, but, because well, because it's not it's not really your music. I'm not sure. You're, you're right. That's a good question. Like if you don't if you don't re up, uh, and if you, it's not as though your original uh, ripped tracks are going to disappear, but will they take back those 256k tracks? My guess would be yes. You will lose your access to those tracks. I think you lose your uh, access, but if you've downloaded them to your hard drive, you still got them, and I don't think they're going to add DRM. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know. There's, there's, there's yeah. still a whole bunch of stuff that, that of still questions. needs to be answered. Uh, another, uh, another, another element that uh, that was sort of. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, try, I'm trying to read and digest and process uh, yeah, as yeah. as I talk. Uh, there, there's there's so much about the about the music end, end of it that really hasn't been talked about. Uh, uh, also. This will give Google an opportunity to start talking about what their pricing plans are or were going to be. Uh, it really does look as though it, it's a very typical Apple move. Uh, if you just want to try to explain to people the difference between these three cloud systems just by sticking to the music side of it, and of course, it's so much more of it to, to it than just music. This really is a very Apple move where it's not just Amazon gave you the solution, whereas we will essentially give you a USB flash drive and a simple web app that will let you access stuff to it, plus a if you download a special desktop app, you'll also be automatically downloading stuff from the from your, your your USB network flash drive back to your music library. Google simply said, if you've got a week to spare and nobody wants to watch Netflix in your house for that week, we will actually let you upload all 10,000 songs and then give you sort of a, a solution for doing it everywhere. Apple has really given us a holistic solution that simply says that imp the implication of having any piece of information anywhere means that you have it everywhere. Uh, and not just uh, in one master music library. Well, and, so, and they've done it the hard way. I mean, you know, that's the that's the thing is that is that I mean, it's the it's elegant, but mm -hmm. it was not well, the easy way. What what Amazon and Google did was basically took the hard, the easy way in some ways because yeah. it was like, okay, we're not going to try to make any agreements with the music industry. We're not going to try to make it. We're just going to give you a big storage area, which is what what they're. That's why it's so expensive is because they have to well, give you storage area where Apple is just simply giving you pointers to those songs. They don't have to store. 200 or 150 gigs or, or 100 gigs of music for each person they're just they just have pointers of, of who yeah. has what I, I would put i would put it this way uh google did it did uh, cloud music the bar bet way meaning you you want a 20 dollar bar bet to say yes i have i have deployed a music a cloud music uh, solution and it's just like you know can i walk for the length of this bar on my hands well you didn't do it very well and you haven't proven that walking on your hands is a good way to get around but you won your 20 dollars you did win the bar bet amazon did it in a very straightforward and conventional way which is if anybody were to come up with a list on the uh, on the back of a napkin on the features that a cloud music system would have to have these are all the features that you would expect and everything that you would anticipate apple did did the thing did the, the the 20 minutes into the future version of it which is well even if you had the power to wrestle the music music publishers down to the ground and get whatever you wanted out of them what kind of a system would you get and if you had control over the entire operating system and every single mobile device what would you do uh, for right. cloud music storage hey. so but, but i just i just remember i just remember what i was what i was going to come up with i really think that everybody's going to have to read that terms of service extremely closely uh when icloud yes. for deploys because what i want to know is that if uh, Apple wrote this really cool software that examines each individual track to see uh, if, well, is that is that a clear, clear clearance clear wall, uh, revival album, did it also say, wait a minute, I recognize that profile. That looks that's exactly the compression signature of a file that's also available on BitTorrent. Yeah, well, that's the that's the, that's the big question that I, I doubt that, but it's worth worth checking on. I think I, that I, Apple wrote I, big I, checks. I would, yeah, yeah, I, I would I doubt that, it with Apple with other companies. I'd be more suspicious. I but think the I music know. industry is like we're getting those checks. Yeah, right. We don't need you to do checks as long as you write checks. Right, right. Hey, I want to thank everybody uh, for watching our live coverage of the WWDC keynote right here on live.twit.tv. If you're new to the network or not, uh, we're building a new studio so we can bring you more of these kinds of things. And you can help us out and immortalize yourself by buying a brick, bricks.twit.tv. This will pave the entryway. Alex Lindsay will have to look at this every day when he walks into Pixel I'm 4. getting one. Because he's going to have a brick, so yep. I want to make sure his is the, still I'm there. The big brick. Are you going to get the big one? I'm getting the big brick. So anyway, if you'd like to uh, to immortalize yourself in our new studio and help us get in there a little faster, go to bricks.twit.tv to help us out. Also, want to thank Slingbox uh, for sponsoring. Slingbox turns your iPad into a television. You can get your home TV anywhere you go right now. Don't have to wait for any software updates. Uh, just install a Slingbox at home. Hook it up to your internet. Hook it up to your television. Get the iPad app. Uh, you can find it at Amazon, Best Buy, or check it out at slingbox.com. We thank them for their support of breaking news. Uh, Andy Anatko, thank you uh, for being along as well. And Alex Lindsay, always great to uh, commentate with you. Yeah, absolutely. That's it for Twit Live special number 82. We'll see you later.